did Socrates say to that? It tickles my face. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Goosies. I don't have hair. Oof. You got Marcos. That's not. No, that's not. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. You do got me. Get over here, Marcos. Let me look at you. They don't want it. Top it in Leroy, ready to deploy. Had to hit her with a little dirt. Lizzo, but that was a decoy. Better have about me, boy. Okay. Leroy Tobin, hold to the show, man. Still some of the with the show, and Till then, his head won't open. Sometimes go taste like a snowman. No proof I'm a lie about a motor. No proof. Like I always wanted him. I never hated him. I never traded him. And if I did, I never ever traded him. You know what? What is a star? Like under the city, the driver's side floor. Go see a large, so many more. Ten in the morning, never a bar. Hey, ten in the morning, two to the peak. Nothing to you, but it's something to me. Hands up, as ever. Cute as can be, you can watch the YouTube review for free. This one time for the Twitch. This one time for the text. This one time for the phone line. Whole time, wonder what they gonna do next. You know, I, I just wish you guys would stop the quibbling. Morning, everybody. Welcome on in. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Taking you up until 2 here on the program. Johnson. Right away on the YouTube chat. You guys can watch it on YouTube. Mommy 560 WQAM. You can watch us on Twitch. Same channel handle. Morning to Dr. Remy. Look at Dr. Toboggan, our medical staff. But uh, Johnson, that's where's Leroy? It's a good question. Connection I problems. I don't know. He's having connection issues. Yeah, you what know, I'm the, trying to get ahead of the game. What of the roof? Uh, the roofers take him out today. <laughs> the roofers have confiscated his phone. They have him locked up. They're like technical problems. I'll be there later. You know the thing is, uh, Dan. Like we've worked together for a very long time, me and Leroy. And uh, you know, I did that back in the early days. You know, sometimes when he was driving to the studio at one, because I'd be there because I was producing the morning shows when I first started hosting this. And uh, I know, you know, I'd start off and be like, hey, uh, you, 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 you here? You coming soon? And be like, if I'm supposed to be there, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me. I said, fair enough. And so I learned my lesson. I don't ask. But then once you get to the threshold of uh, the show has started, I would usually give it like a segment. And then I'll be like, hey, man, where are you? Because I figured he's, uh, yeah, I don't know, there's some kind of headache going on at Casa Horde. Yeah. You know, I, he's my wardy, so I'm not going to get on him too much. But I will say this. You're coming from Lake Worth or Orlando or Pensacola. I don't know exactly know where. It's a little bit of a haul. It's a hike. You're coming in. You make sure that you get here on time. I'm kind of carless right now, semi-homeless right now. Boom. You and I are here. Leroy yep. just has to connect. All he's got to do is connect. Here now. You know, he's getting uh, he's getting his J-Fig on. What's going on, man? Where were you? Nothing. I was sitting here and <clears throat> hold up one second. I, 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 I had to switch. Uh, I had to switch internet. Uh, like right. not, you know, the the different because I have like guest network and you don't, have like, network. A, you don't have like a default. Yeah, the it wasn't connect. It wasn't Weird. like it wasn't connecting to the website. So I had to switch. And how early did you attempt this? Uh, probably nine forty five. At least 15 minutes. I'll give so you had to like reset the router and all that. No, I just had to keep going through the different because I have guests, I have, uh, and then if all else fails, I go to my phone. So I have a thousand different ways, but just normally I just plug through. in. You should probably like, uh, you should go through your computer or have your IT go through your computer and like forget some of those networks. I don't think you need that many networks. No, they all, they, no, I use them all. You're using you a, you use, a business. I mean, you're you you don't live at a hotel. I mean, you have a very no, nice big house, but I no, don't. Think but but I have happen. here's what here's what happens. I have that Eero going through my house. Your who? Right, Eero. An Eero? They're it's delicious. Like, no, it's like the uh, extenders. But oh like, yeah, okay. So yeah, those, those things are hacks. Those so, no, are. no, they're not. Here's why. Okay, because keep in mind, I have my pool set up through wi-fi also so you have to situate them so that too many things aren't connected to one so i have that then i have the main uh system which is just the wi-fi from the the router right there Mm -hmm. and sometimes for whatever reason one's slow to hook up so i just switch to another one so another good question. Since you're relying on this a lot, why don't you get the cable guy or the internet guy or the whatever server guy to come out there and put a wire from your computer to a hard drive? Because it's in a different room. 
You see what I'm saying? So right. where where the router is is two rooms it feels over. Like you're making it more complex than you need to. No, it's actually not that difficult. It just caught me off guard because it doesn't usually happen. All right. Let's get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. I got the train. I got caught by a train. <laughs> Multiple trains. Multiple trains. Multiple trains. That's the best part. I like how I've had car problems and all types of stuff. I'm always here on time. I call Lynn. I'm going to be a little late. So how late? I'm only going to be there an hour early. He's like, okay, okay. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. I'm usually nervous. Well, I would be nervous if you weren't here an hour early, Dan, because you are <laughs> the most early person I've ever we met. We all know the life. reason hey, why. Dan, Dan, here's what I tell people, and Tobin knows this. Unless I call, I'll be there. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying before you <laughs> got on the air. I'm like, I wouldn't call him to find out where he is because well, I learned that lesson like two shows into uh, us doing shows. Yeah. Don't, you don't have to call me. In, like, Because yeah. much like Dan, I'm usually pretty early to places, usually. And yeah. I'm like, Leroy's not here? Like, it's 15 minutes till the show. Leroy, goes, if, I'm if not... I say I'm going to be there, I'll be there. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to call him again. Right. Leroy, you get it right now. I know you're going to get this right away. If I'm not here, two places you need to check. Where are the two places you need to check if I'm not here at work and I don't call in and say I have a problem? Jail and the hospital. There you go. <laughs> more. <laughs> Jail number one. Yeah, the more number two. <laughs> JFig says, Dan, you live down the street. You got to be honest, though, JFig. Like, if you did live down the street, something tells me you'd find, like, some obstacle that would still have you. <laughs> yeah. You know, too. Yeah, she got there when we were when we were at Trump. She lives the closest. Yeah. Well, it, it, it was uh, it was it was something like, look, it's it, it, there'll there'll be a train that pops by, but I always I always uh, think of JFig every time I go to the Heat games because of that slow ass train that. Uh, oh that, my like, god! How slow does that train, train go? Oh my god! It's crazy. And, and and a, do they have an arrangement? Should they have an arrangement with the port that? I don't know. Five minutes before the damn game, you can't have a train run through there. You would, you would you think would, so. You, you would, would think, think so. You Mickey would think has there's the blackout uh, times. You would think Mickey, king of the port, would have like, uh, hey, no trains uh, at this point. But I think he takes a boat to the game. So I don't. Think I've seen can. I've seen people that get irritated, and the trains moving so slow, they just jump on the train and jump over. I'm like, I wouldn't do that. No, I'm not doing that. All you need to do is one little slippy poo, and it's over. What if that train speeds up? Just at that it, point, it, it first speed. of all, it ain't it ain't speeding up. I don't know. I'm not risking that. Oh, wait. I was early to Trump. I didn't expect to go through national security. I got to <laughs> tell you, hey, I got to tell you, there was more people scanning our badges, Ooh. and it was like 75 checkpoints. Boop. Yeah, they're like, so, oh, what do you want a scone, sir? Boop. Like, so, uh, oh my God, I'm, I'm, glad you guys, I, I'm glad you guys know I entered here to get a get get the uh, the juice dispenser. Right, like even if you go went to get lunch, um, sir, sir. <clears throat> so, have a nice day. Did you get as annoyed as I did last night with the heat? Oh, not yeah. really. Not really. I've gotten to the point of the season where they are who they are. I actually came out of it pretty happy. Oh, that's what I've been saying. No, it's just, but no, you say it in a, in a worse way. I'm just like, I, 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 you have to love, you have to love your team's flaws. And I'm just like, eh, all right, here they go again. I was annoyed by some of Jimmy at the end of the game there. I don't know what the hell he was doing. Um, but I, I came out of yesterday with a positive outlook, Leroy. Yeah. What's Jovich. That? Yeah. Hey. Yo, hey, dude. If I can recall last year, hmm? I was saying that guy can't help this team. I mean, I don't know what he was ready for. He'd been playing with grown ass men since he was 15 years old. Well, he yesterday uh arguably had his best game as a heat player. The only thing you could really compare it to is when he lit up the Bucks that one game and was like hitting seven threes. But this one. I think the thing that's just great about him is, you know, he's just doing it all. Some of the As, passes yes. that he can make, yes. his defense has improved, and he's yes. 20. He's 20. He's My highlight of the game, I thought about you, is when he got that rebound over everyone through the outlet pass and got nailed in the face. Yeah. I was like, he's balling, man. Killing it yesterday, dude. He's got his three-point shot going for him. Uh, you know, he's just always in the right place at the right time. I think the team has really embraced him. Jimmy Butler called him a mother bleeper last night on live television. It was great. <laughs> Jimmy Butler's I, like that mother bleeper. Oh, sorry. 
uh, that guy, damage is done. <laughs> right? Like, you can't. <laughs> and then Jack goes, don't worry about it. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, very impressive. The thing that I am impressed with, with the Heat, and this usually happens in a transition period, is that when the older guys leave, they have youth and talent that are ready to take over as we speak. Yeah. And that normally does not happen. But you know how frustrating it's been? Like all these years, you're trying to find the right guy to play next to Bam, and it's like it always is either an undersized power forward because he can shoot or a lethargic center who they kind of is like a token center because he's not really a center. He's just there to shoot threes. And then, like, now finally, I feel like I have Bam's front court mate for the next 10 years. Right. I feel and, like this and, guy's and, not going anywhere. And you know what helps that? It doesn't hurt sitting on the bench and being next to Kevin Love. Love, love! Who is very similar. In his youth, he was what Jovic is doing now. Except the only thing that I would say about Jovi is he doesn't get a lot of rebounds. Right? I don't know if it's because he's on the perimeter, but Kevin Love was a, a, a rebounding machine. That's true. And so that would be the only difference. But as far as shooting the three, I think Jovic is a better ball handler. Oh, but those passes between him and 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 Kevin Love, they work well with pretty much anybody. And and that uh, looking into the future is, is something to be extremely positive about. Uh, because finally, and guess what? You know what's crazy about it? It mm. took a whole bunch of injuries for us to to actually see it on the floor, and that's okay. I'm just happy because Spo was talking about this last night, and he's like, you know, I sometimes have to remind myself that he's 20, but he has gotten so much better every single month. Right. And I'm just like, man, well, this I is mean, so cool because usually, yeah, listen, it's tough to get out of the Spo doghouse, you know? It's tough to be like, eh, am I going to really trust this kid? And he's absolutely trustworthy. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was yeah. like – Anytime he's not out there, like, closing now, I'm like, come on, get him out there. He's going to make positive stuff happen. He's not getting eaten alive on defense. Which is, which is, I, I tell you what, and you can go to all of the other young players that Spo has had. Mm -hmm. He's probably picked up the defensive portion of it quicker than any of them. Yep. Right? You look at how long did it take dunks. Oh, man. Yeah. Tyler, Tyler still is questionable on the defensive end oh. if we're being honest you right intangibles defense yesterday i don't think oh. I, I, don't, I i've never been shook to my core about is jim vp coming back more so than bogdanovich blocking him i'm like oh no oh my god that was I'm crazy like, oh, no. right oh no but uh but yeah i like look them blowing the lead all right whatever i've, I've gotten mad about a hundred blown leads this year I'm just like, you know what? This kid saved the day in overtime. He was awesome. I'm going to be happy about that. And then we move on to tonight. Dallas Mavericks in town. They're the hottest team in basketball. Oh, my goodness. And it's not even close. Well, they might not play people because uh, they, because I guess the, Kevin, uh, Jason, Kevin, Jason Kidd has put it as there'll be conversations. <laughs> Which means that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know well, if we're going to see Luca. Here's the problem, though. The only one that may sit is Kyrie. He plays with a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. But Luka doesn't burn energy. Nah. Luka is like Joker, right? They yeah. use minimal energy to score a double last night. Right, right. With minimal energy. They don't jump on their jump shots. Right? They all they, they all have uh they all have that one-legged jumper. Plus, I'm sure he's gonna have a ton of Slovenians here tonight. Uh usually Miami's that city where they like to come to. Oh uh, yeah. Well, well, now, now I wonder. I wonder on, yeah. if that was more because Gogi was in town. Also, Gogi was Gogi still in town. Maybe Gogi comes in. He sits next to Mister uh, Mickey Harrison. Oh, maybe he brings the the the. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Celebrity uh tour tour guide. Yep. Because he's got that monster game coming up in Slovenia in the summer, the last game mm -hmm. that he's playing, which apparently he's going to have Luca Jimmy. Um, I think Joker's playing in it too. Like this, this last celebration game for him in the country. Uh -huh. Once the uh, the basketball season's over, 
But man, loved Jovic last night. Most improved player next year. I mean, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be next year. But but do you have to? My question is, do you have to keep starting Yovi? Yes. Okay. I never want him to be on the bench. Never. I want him and Bam next to each other for the next decade. Okay. That's just what I want. I, I uh, figure out the rest. You think last night? Last night, he carried you bums. Okay. That's just the facts of it. Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler got a little. Uh, he got a little erratic there in the fourth too. Ooh, did he? I mean, Jovic, he saved everybody's ass yesterday, and I don't want him going anywhere. Uh, so you think Terry took last night off because it was back to back, and he's playing this night tonight? Possibly. I think his neck is just messed up. His because neck- what I would say is, is that if Kyrie plays. I mean, oh my goodness, Tyler. Tyler might not play though. That, I think that's. I don't think that's in stone because he just came back. Okay. So but, I don't know. But still, but still, I, do we'll you see. want do you want to see Tyler's with his arms spread out across from Kyrie? It's a challenge. Challenge. He's challenge. gonna look. He's gonna look like old Gabby for the lava. Challenge. Panthers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got a shutout last night. Uh, we didn't get that, but uh, who, who but Stor- strangely, Stolars was in goal. I don't understand. Yeah. There was like a switcheroo there. It worked. I don't know. But he, I mean, uh, he's, he's been playing well. This is the second most points uh, Panthers team has ever had uh, outside of that 2022 team that won the President's Cup. They're killing it. Well, it's it, well, they haven't been killing it. It's been nice to see them. I mean, they they own the Senators. This we know. Well, but everybody. We, does. It's been a really good season. It's just been a little bit of a. Is this? It's just the last month movies. has been so shaky that you kind of lost big picture. Uh, the 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 recency bias has made us lose track of the big picture, and and that's that's where we are with that. But um, the coach doesn't seem to be worried. Like I don't know. Like I'm for a guy who is. I mean, a madman on the bench. He gets after the game. He goes, I know, I know where we are. I, I know what's going on. Probably goes We're good. breathing exercises. Right. Know. Like, it, 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 he's he's a very mellow uh, guy. And the Marlins. Oh. One and 11. Dude. I, and, and listen, Bally's, I love you. Okay. Oh, people are mad about this. Stop. There's a day game, and you show yesterday's game during the day. It messes me up. Oh, I thought that you were going to be upset because they're showing Marlins over Panthers. They did? Yeah. Panthers weren't on TV? Panthers were like, you have to you have to log into the app to watch the Panthers, which it doesn't bother me because I, I watch through the app everything, but I know if you have cable or you have DirecTV or whatever, I was I was watching the Heat game, and you'll be very impressed. Mm -hmm. And you know, on Tuesday night before I go to bed, I shave, right? So I'm like, man, overtime. So I hit my little Direct TV, put it on my phone, and I was shaving and watching the game on my little phone. How about you? Yeah, it's it's difficult. I I don't like it. I like big picture, but I had to I had to case something happened. You know, I needed to see it. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, an old friend popped up yesterday. That's next. WQAM broadcasting live from the end.
All right, welcome back. Tobin and Leroy here with you. I'm going to talk to uh, Miami Heat radio and TV analyst Amy Audibert oh, right. later on in today's program. Always love when Amy stops yep. by the show. You got the uh, everybody, you got the the Pinks back in action tonight. The Not second there. leg, right? Was This is second leg, <laughs> on the calf. Yes. But so they, they uh, have to win Champions they, Cup. <clears throat> if they win 2 1, it's a, a, a shootout, not a shootout, but yep. penalty kicks. Yep. If they win 2 0, they win. And if they win 3 1, win. And if they, win three, one, they win. And what's the status of Messi for tonight? I think he's playing, right? Oh, I heard he no. was gonna, not going to play the first league leg, but the second leg. And I quote Tata Martino, he felt fine in the 45 minutes against Colorado. The injury seems to be a thing of the past. Wow. Plus, All they right. got plenty of juice for tonight. You know that, right? I just saw the, the amount of Messi fans down there. It looked bananas. That's How not the run? reason. Apparently, Monterey's coach going into the first leg said, oh, you know Inter-Miami is going to get all the calls because of Messi. Inter-Miami is the one that got red carded. That's one of their true. Players kicked they got out. screwed. Post game, there's apparently evidence that Messi and the head coach got into it verbally, and an assistant coach from Monterey says Messi lifted his hand like he was going to throw a punch at some point. Ooh, I like this oh. juicy, juicy. Ten thirty. You can get that uh, tonight on AM seven ninety. Where does it air on television, uh, Dan? The only play. Oh no, it does air no, because it is uh, FS1 or FS2 FS2. usually because it's Concacaf Champions and not MLS. So Messi yeah. doesn't have his hands on it. <laughs> he doesn't get a cut. He doesn't get that doesn't Messi get, Plus TV. He doesn't, he doesn't get that cut. But ten thirty is the kickoff. So he got that ready. Tobes cut last year. I'm like, damn it, Messi. Now so, I don't, yeah. then I was like, wait, what do we mean? All the games aren't on Apple TV. I was I, I was very yeah. confused. I had to keep go searching for games yet last year. So it's like it's like back in the fighting days. I have prepared my master's picks. Oh, wow. All Just right. let me know when you're ready. I will let you know when, uh, when we're ready for and, that. And by the start? way, <clears throat> you know the last time a first-time master's participant won? Nope. 1979. Wow. Who was the first-timer? Well, he, uh, yeah. Fuzzy Zeller. No, no, no! But who's the first time? Like, do you, you are you bringing yes. up the stat for a reason? Is there a person who is there's making there's a, there's a couple of guys, uh, Ludwig Aberg. Oh, oh, Ludwig! That dude, that dude I wasn't is, gonna bet on Ludwig. That dude is awesome. No? That dude is awesome. Also, the uh, seven iron, Akshay Batia. He just won to get mm. in. All right. He's been All playing. Right. He's been playing really well. But uh, I, I don't. It's something about. Um, this golf course, it takes a lot of plotting and a lot of figuring things out, and you got to play it a lot. Um, Tiger won relatively quick, but he I think he played as an amateur twice before, and then he didn't win his first time, but he won his second time out. So, like, yeah, so he played it, like, three or four times before he actually won, but only his second time as a professional. Mm. So, did you guys see this? Uh, I got this sent to 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 slid into me DMs the the last couple of days. But um, do you know who's popped his little head out of a prairie hole recently? Who? Leroy? No. You remember Nevin Shapiro? Oh, I saw it. Oh, my Nevin goodness. Shapiro. Oh, he's dropped, coming out with a vengeance. What is wrong with him? Teaser trailer. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, I'll I'll throw this up here on our youtube and twitch but it's like slow walking out of jail he's got the canes windbreaker on looks aged. yeah looks looks like he is uh he's aged he's aged but uh <laughs> let's see, let's see this uh from pandemic Nevin in Shapiro, america has led to some at risk coronavirus pandemic in america has led to some at risk prisoners being released from jail one of them is a familiar name to university of miami sports fan the hurricanes booster nevin shapiro Maybe thinking, I remember that name. He was the former Miami booster and Ponzi scheme organizer. And the story reads like a movie script. So the NIL situation has become the biggest thing in college sports. Kids getting paid crazy money, pay for play. I guess people forgot where this really originated from. NIL, that's Nevin image and likeness. That's where that 
started. Anything else is a joke. That's how it went down. I'm looking for all the smoke. You want me? Come see me. Oh man! Like I don't there understand. I don't, uh, but but here's what I was saying. <laughs> you who, want me? Who who wants him? Like I, I don't know. know. Who's, who's he after? Didn't Billy Corbin already do this story? Like what do you mean? Like what's what's left to be said? I don't really. He has to be banned from campus, right? I would oh. think so. Oh yeah. I mean, LSU banned Master P from being on campus when I was there because Master P was trying to be an agent and recruit players. Nevin Shapiro did a lot worse. I would think so. Uh, he is right. Like, look, the uh, the the walls have definitely gotten a lot uh, that have come down on that, what tabooness that was. I honestly think that a lot of that Nevin Shapiro story was kind of crazy, like how much it was blown out of proportion just because like right. it wasn't um, even, it wasn't even real money. Yeah, it was. It was right. like he, he like went up there. First of all, it seemed like the basketball program was way more tied to him than the football because Randy Shannon hated his guts. But there were football players who certainly hung out with Nevin Shapiro. The guy, he was a hobnobber. He was around, you know, he was courtside at the heat games, all this type of stuff. What could he possibly have to say that is of interest to people? I kind of feel like this but story. I don't, is I don't know. Spirit. I don't know if that's why he's look. the 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 problem is, right. That based on what's going on now, the amount of money he was throwing down wouldn't even make the top 20, right? So what kind of smoke, and, and here's the other thing, is all of the guys that he may have taken care of are no longer playing football. Right. That was a long time ago. So um, I don't know when he said, I want all that smoke. Um, first of all, Nev. Okay, we, you know, look, I ain't holding none of that against you. You just being, you know, a big booster or whatever, and it happens. It's hap It was happening all over the country. People were getting in trouble. Um, Reggie Bush lost his Heisman over it. Um, real, real, like, situations, right? Between Miami and Ohio State, who just gave up, did some tattoos, and they ended up getting their coach fired, right? Uh, so I, I get what you're saying, mm -hmm. but at the same time, who's, who's bringing smoke? And, and, and that's a phrase, I don't know. that's a phrase that was hot when you went into jail. I mean, he had you a, don't use that phrase no more. He went to a, he went to jail for a very large Ponzi scheme. This was not just a, uh, and it had nothing to do with Miami. Why went, he went to, like, no, I mean, he just had all this money to give to Miami because, you know, by by getting them through nefarious means, like what I don't understand. And, he's and here's he's, the, walking, he's walking into something. Everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, you paid players now." Like the Canes just paid for their quarterback. Like who cares? Here's the other, here's the other thing, right? The crazy thing about all this is, the kids got in trouble. Nevin got in trouble for something different. I might add. So like, right? He's not in jail for right. 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 He's in jail for the Ponzi scheme. Yeah, for robbing Peter to pay Paul. But guess what? The University of Miami was cool with it because Nevin Shapiro was everywhere. Oh, yeah. So let's not act. I'm not know. watching the hands of, of the king. Like, look, the, the, the pictures of, like, him at the bowling alley giving a check and Donna Shalala. What, what about the smoke? Him out. walking out of the smoke. Him out of the smoke. Yeah, like, look, he right. definitely. But, all right. What else could possibly come of this? Like, they've. First of all, they they had the cloud that was hanging over the Canes forever. What possible smoke could he be threatening? Right. Other than is he asking to get to, to run through the smoke again? Like, does he just want to be a season ticket holder? He don't have enough for that. <laughs> he don't have enough money for that. I don't know, man. <laughs> Schemers always know how to scheme. You know, Yesterday's price is not today's price. We got all this NIL out there. Your money, your money ain't going to own open up you can't come out of the smoke for that amount he's gonna go uh he's gonna he's gonna bring back crypto and like that's how that's how, that's how nevin shapiro is gonna be back into our lives or back in jail perhaps <laughs> you want me come find me you think anybody's looking no no and that, that, that's fine like I, I get it like what were you talking about they're like uh, due to COVID, we've had to release some high uh, security prisoners. No, some high people that were uh, susceptible to high risk. High risk. That's it. Dangerous? 
it had nothing to do. No, high susceptible to. They were just trying to make jails less less crowded. If you were more susceptible to getting COVID, because right, jails yeah. aren't oh, very, when they jails said, aren't very sanitary. Oh, when they said high risk, that's what they meant. I thought they meant like yeah. he's a danger to society, but they no, 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 no. How long do you think he was? Uh, how long do you think he was sitting in his cell thinking of Nevin image and likeness? Nil, that's Nevin image and likeness. It's better than uh, Dabo Swinney's though, where he's uh, saying we made Nil in God's name, image, and likeness. That's our Nil, and that's why you were six and ten last year, or whatever your record was. Because <laughs> you look, look, you can be religious and you can love God. But them kids won't cash. Uh, Jordan says, it's, kind of, that. it's funny that he's still wearing Miami gear. Oh yeah, he's he's booted. He's suited and booted, like you see in there. And he's got the uh, yeah. the windbreaker on. Yeah, maybe he just wants to uh, go to the spring game this weekend. Was that a, a gym? Uh, yeah, I guess it's at Cobb Stadium on campus where the track team plays. <laughs> there are going to be about a thousand people there because they've added seating. Got to have a ticket. Maybe. I like how it goes too from him wearing uh, gym shorts to then he's got like the nicest. Are those like his his court pants? <laughs> court pants that he's got going on there. How does he oh. have such a bad complexion? He hadn't been in the sun that much. I, right. It seems like he's. It seems like since he's been out, he's been hitting the tan in bed at least mm-hmm. with a little bronzer. Yeah, well, I like the way he for 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 uh, for effect. He pulls the glasses up. Of course, I'm like, that's Ooh. how you know. Yeah, ooh, that did it. Want me? I don't know. Come find me. I thought that was more of a distraction. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He's looking. It looks like he fell asleep on the beach. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't like. Like, first of all, there's no stories that he could tell, right? Because everybody's already passed it. the The NCAA really can't do anything right now because nobody's listening. Nobody's listening to the NCAA. No. So so there's nothing that he could possibly do or have. But I will say this. The way college athletics works now, money talks. So I don't know if there's a university that would say your money is not good with us. You see what I mean? I think with him, just because of the name, like no one's going to take a check from him and the Canes anymore. Yeah, but I think he loves the Canes. He is he's hey, down on the Canes. He though. definitely seems like he loves the Canes. If 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 the check is big enough, and it gets but you, to don't the, know where that money's coming from. Like you, that's you, a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story, right? Like here, when universities take the check, and they take check from these businesses. They don't know. They don't vet these businesses. They just look at the check. Yeah. Remember the old story? Nelson Rockefeller sent like a million dollar check to some school and they were like, sorry, we don't take blood money. So he sent back a check for like $50 million and said, how do you like blood money now? And they sure enough cash that check. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, let's not act like, you know, we have like, you know, standards. Like, no. If, If you have a number one recruit, and Nevin Shapiro says, I'll give him a million dollars to come here. If that if that check cash. So you think that Nevin here, Shapiro, you think Nevin Shapiro can buy his way back into the canes? Everybody has a price. Everybody got a price. Look, Leroy, Michigan, right. LSU the same way. No check is too big. And if you don't like certain animals crawling around campus, we will extinguish them. If you don't like certain people, if you don't like this. You let us know. I feel like we're going to yeah. see Nevin Shapiro by one of those stripper pole tailgate parties at the Canes. I'll shake his hand. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know about that. But... <laughs> hey, like, I, I just, listen, and I know maybe I'm being a little cynical about the whole thing, right? But the reality of it is, is that you can't be one of these universities that talk about, you know, we don't want this while then on the other side of the street telling all your boosters, we need more money to get the kids to come here. Yeah. But you want money. That's not on the up and up, not stolen from other people. Uh, again, he paid his price. He paid us. They, they get, they can justify. You want me to, you want me to here say I'm university X. 
mm-hmm. and Nevin Shapiro went to jail for uh, whatever, right? Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme. Three hundred. And now he's out, and he paid his debt to society. He has done that. I'm just going to assume that the money that he has now is good money. Does he have money now? I don't know. But He's if he got- wrote a check for a million dollars, like, are we going to go chase that money or are we going to take the check? I think that he's going to have to send his money elsewhere. I think you got to draw the line at some points. I, I don't think the guy who is. You think people draw the line. Have you people- been on this planet? I understand, but you Nobody can't. Nobody draws the line. Look at look at how things you work. You can't you can't allow a show pony who caused who caused you to be under national sk- uh, sanctions and scandal. The word death for penalty years. came out a couple times. Yeah, too. you can't have that guy hanging around your program anymore. Unless I, the only way he the only way his money's going to be good is if he buys season tickets and maybe allow him to like the okay. upper deck. So let me let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So. If he buys season tickets and the way season tickets work, okay, is the tickets cost X amount of dollars, but you are required to give a donation for the rest of the value of the tickets. It's some kind of little, I don't know how they do it. That's like that garbage they do when you go to like the the Met in New York. Right. Exactly. Suggested price to enter the Met. Right. What is that? So, like, so I could, I, I just wanted to be the other person. I'm like, so I could just go in here for free? Well, for a couple bucks? Right. So, but that's 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 how they do things. Because when I got season tickets for the games, me and Fonz went to all the games, right? The home games one year. Um, The ticket prices were like 35 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 mm-hmm. bucks. Okay. But the tickets cost 1200 and the rest is a donation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you if, know, you if, Nevin, if Nevin Shapiro were to buy season tickets and then donate a million bucks or whatever, and he's a gold club member, is the university going to send that money back? I don't know. Hell no. Mm. They not. Because there's people all throughout that stadium that have to do the same thing. He just donated a little extra. They're going to put it into the fund. Everybody else doesn't have a scandal attached to the school. Okay. He's not going to be allowed to buy season tickets. Really? You think so? If you could ban somebody somebody from an area code, why can't you ban a name? Yeah, he's not going to. Unless he's like Shmevin Napiro. Again, I'm not saying it is or isn't going to happen. I'm just saying that maybe I'm just... A little closer to reality. Dade South is letting a Ponzi schemer back in the program. That's not tough. That's not tough. Okay. Schmeathen says, wouldn't it be funny if he became FIU's biggest booster? That would be funny. That would be funny. Somebody take the money. Take a break. Back after this.
Now, right, welcome back. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Take you up until two here on the program. Uh, last night, got a scare with the Bucks game. The Bucks beat the Celtics yesterday, but Giannis at the Tacumpo non contact injury on Ooh, his Ooh, the non contacts on the calf? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, okay. Hey, I told you about that. That calf is attested at Achilles. No, that's the report are that his Achilles tendon is fully intact, but it's uh but he's under a calf strain. So Ooh, hey. Uh, same and, thing happened. Same thing happened to old boy. Uh he had a calf strain. KD Came back and play KD, then Achilles tear. Be careful. I'm just telling you, we've had this discussion before. Well, I mean, at best, man, you got to think of cash. I mean, unless he's just a miracle healer, like that's going to be at least a couple of weeks, right? Just to be safe. Um, with it me. depends on how bad it is. And and sometimes you'll hear like a little pop, right? And it's it's scary, right? Because like I, that happened with my hamstring. I thought I blew my knee out. Oof. Right? And I still have the hole in my hamstring. Uh, So I don't know. You know, like it's hard to determine the severity of it, what what he felt or whatever. Sometimes it just grabs you, right? And it scares you from that standpoint that it grabs. And it might just be like a warning. Hey, this your cab speaking. Let's calm down a minute. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know. You know, there's a lot of different levels. But all I know is this. Most Achilles injuries start off. You go look at all these basketball players. Most of them start off as a calf strain. Uh, yeah. Heads to Kumpo exited Tuesday's game against the Celtics in the third quarter, crumbling to the floor while grabbing his left leg. Uh, teammates had to carry him off the floor. Oh, no. called, it, called the injury a strain to enter Kumpo's left solstice. Sol Solius. Yeah, you got two calves. Uh, which is the muscle in the back part of the calf. Bucks coach Doc Rivers so said that the game I'm, that I'm trying to think. The 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 back of the calf, there's a there's a like a, a outside and a middle one. I think the middle one is more attached to the um Achilles. So uh, don't uh they might both be attached to some extent, but I think the one inside. Is the, the one out, the outer one is the sol soleus, right? Doc, oh, River, no Doc Rivers said after the game that Antetokounmpo was going to get an MRI, get his calf tested, also have his uh, as Achilles looked at. Uh, Rivers they won't said, play for the rest of the week. But Rivers so. said that their concern over Antetokounmpo's status was high, and the Bucks were going to hope for the best. How are you feeling about this, Doc? I got to tell you, now a lot of people will look at this as a curse. But I'm going to say this. I was having a problem trying to figure out how the hell to get him and Dame to play together anyway. Oh, wow. So maybe this is oh, a blessing oh. in disguise. That we're going to bring him back gradually. He's going to still be able to do his Giannis stuff. But then Dame, not Dame, got to take over. Oof. Didn't think Doc Rivers was going to go that way. Hmm. I'm just saying, they, they've they been having problems trying to figure out how they, these two going to function together because um, from what I've heard about them is they play well with a different set of players, right? So there's a couple of players that Giannis plays great with, and there's a certain type couple of players that Dame plays well with. And so when Giannis is out and Dame plays with those other players, uh, they seem to function just as well. But I would say this. Giannis is a freak of nature, right? And he scores because he is a freak of nature. But Dame is just a straight-up scorer. So I'm wondering how that dynamic is going to play out if Giannis has to miss some time and then Dame is just able to go out there and do Dame stuff. You see what I mean? Because there's a difference. 
there's a difference in, say, Giannis and yeah, but they're not they, if, they, if they end up in a two seven with heat with Miami or Philadelphia without Giannis, they're in trouble, dude. Because they don't have the size. Yeah, they're in trouble. Like, right. That's a, that's an issue. No, I so, know. No, I know. Yeah. No, I, I I know. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying the dynamic of those two guys hasn't quite worked out the way everybody anticipated. No, for sure. It, it's been. But, but uh, I will say this: that just like any other team that's threatening or trying to get a championship, those two guys are gonna get you sixty every night. Some combination, right? So that puts them in the game. No matter how clumsy it looks or whatever, between Dame and Giannis, you're gonna get fifty or sixty points every night. And that makes you able to compete. I, I do believe that when you have two guys that can do that, um, you have a chance. And that's one of the questions I have about the Heat. It's spread out a little bit more. But the way it's spread out, sometimes you had the wrong guy in. Well, uh, take a quick break. Get your headlines. Plus, uh, some interesting comments coming out of uh, Dolphins land. We'll get to those coming up next.
It's time for our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tonga Valoa. Not to a tag of Leoa. A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Chris Sims can go to hell. Tua Tonga Valoa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Check the history of food. <laughs> uh, Tua the program, ladies and gentlemen. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Let's get to our headlines. Brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks we got dan and white on first take right now leroy is uh, promoting ufc 300 this weekend did they call him the right name oh, Three. oh yeah that, that, oh, that's a great, i don't know if you guys have seen this clip it went uh viral last week sage steel had dana white on their podcast um for two hours and she asked him this strange question and she's like what are joe rogan's dreams and he goes excuse me he goes, your dreams. What what are your dreams? He goes, you think I'm Joe Rogan? It just got very awkward from there. It was hilarious. But uh, UFC 300 coming up Saturday. Stacked card. Cannot wait for it. Cannot wait for it. By the way, I should mention as a programming note to everybody out there who wants a little coverage of it, uh, Tapped Out on BetQL returns live uh, this Saturday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So uh, if you guys are looking for a little lead up into it and get some uh, betting advice, I will be back there hosting uh, for two hours on Saturday night on the BetQL Network. All our Twitchers out there, twitch.tv slash BetQL. Check that on out, Leroy. All right. Well, you don't have to check it out. I mean, you get enough of me all week. but Yeah. If I have a question, I just call. You just let me know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have the mock drafts left and right, willy-nilly Leroy. I guess Today, the, the only guy moving up is J.J. McCarthy, right? Yeah. He started off, he was going to be in the 20s, and now he's top five. The uh, The latest mock draft from Mel Kuyper. I don't know if this is 3.0, 4.0. I don't know what Kuyper's up to yet. But uh, he has uh, Jared Verse, defensive end from Florida State, going to the uh, to the Dolphins at 21 said uh yes miami has bradley chubb and jalen phillips as its top edge rushers but both coming off serious season ending injuries phillips towards achilles chubb towards acl no guarantee that either will be 100 percent healthy when training camp starts that's why the dolphins could take verse who's impressive power and a 254 pound frame his 50 qb pressures last season were eighth most in fbs miami has to replace a few starters with offseason subtractions, but verse would be a no-brainer selection if he is still on the board. Question. Yep. There's a couple of positions that also need consideration. One is offensive line. Mm-hmm. Two is offensive line. It's and three, true. and three is defensive uh tackle um with where you're drafting now with those guys returning not knowing when shouldn't you get a position or draft a position that's going to be more long term in filling your needs instead of a temporary fill you see what i'm saying if those guys are coming back, you're going to have rush ins when you come back. So you're going to have depth at that position. Where you're thin is offensive line and defensive line and tackle. You don't have any. So would it be better to fill those needs instead of filling a temporary need? Um. Well, 
I mean, they always say like you could you you rotate a lot of those guys, those pass rush guys. Like you can never really get enough of them, right? Yeah, but you don't have any pressure up the middle. The, those, believe me when I tell you, without the pressure up the middle, those rush ins don't mean squat. You got to get some kind of pressure up the middle. That is the biggest void, right? Along with offensive line, because. Now, look, I don't know how accurate this is, but the new center that we signed, everybody's like, good riddance. Yeah, but that that was said about Connor Williams, too. Yes, and and it could be the scheme. It could be the scheme. So I'm not – I'm listen, I'm just saying what everybody has been saying, right? I'm not saying what I believe to be true because evidently, you know, the fact that they signed it means that they – they see something that they like. Yeah, um, I, I have a lot of trust in Mike McDaniel when it comes to the offensive line. That's why I do. I'm not sure how much they are going to invest a high pick on offensive line. Uh, okay. For the record, Kuiper does have them because it's a two it's a two round mock draft for those who uh, want both rounds. He has them taking at 55, Christian Haynes, guard out of UConn. UConn. Yep. Hmm. Miami's faced upheaval along the offensive line this season, okay. creating a hole at guard. Dolphins ranked 34th in pass block win rate. Uh, so a change could be good. Haynes started 49 games wait, at wait, 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 wait. college. I think he's ranked 34th. Yeah, when you said 34th. I meant 31st. My bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, were they that bad? Oh, well, it was still bad. <laughs> they put two college teams ahead of them? A couple uh, of semi-UFL teams? The Dolphins in ranked 31st in pass block win rate at 49.2%, so a change could be good. Haynes started 49 games at right guard in college. He allowed just one sack over his final three seasons. He is my number three ranked player at the position. Question. Yep. Now. If your offensive line ranked 31st in pass win rate, okay, and we thought that they were better than they were the year before, does that not give more credit to Tua? It does give credit to Tua. I mean, we definitely also saw that, you know, once Connor Williams went down, they had to put that bum Eichenberg at center that. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying that. It works hand in hand. Sometimes you can have an average offensive line with a good quarterback to to kind of make up for the deficiencies that you have up front. And based on what you just said, it sounds like Tua made up for a lot of those inefficiencies by either getting rid of the ball or being accurate because he led the league in passing with the 31st ranked offensive line as far as passing win rate that that like if you put all the numbers together the the reasons why that successful has to go somewhere and it has to go to the quarterback it does but i think every i, I think to his numbers too though when when there wasn't when there was any pressure on him as opposed to getting any kind of time uh dramatically bad like they fall off a cliff if they, if anybody sure. gets to okay. sure but but he still led the league in passing so that means that, like, there was a lot of issues all year, right? Not just a couple of patches. And sometimes he couldn't make up for it. I mean, it was a patchwork offensive line. They had to keep right. no, I know. doing a lot of changes. They, they've right. suffered a lot of injuries on the offensive line. So I, was the number- to, I was just trying to give two of some flowers. That's yeah, all. absolutely. But so if the numbers show that you have the 31st when it comes to offensive win rate and you've had a Swiss cheese line and you've done all this – why are we waiting till the second round to drop a lineman? Wouldn't that be your priority? That first thing yeah, first, well, first round and you go get one. I'll, I'll get. I'll straighten that one out. Um, just because you add a first rounder doesn't mean your offensive line gets a lot better. And and I would say this: that depending on the depth at the position also determines when you pick that guy. So, for example. If you can get the same type of talent that you would get at 21 drafting that defensive end, that that rush in, because that position was deep, then I would say, okay, now you can pick and choose whether you want to go O-line or rush in, depending on who's available, right? But if there's a lot of depth at offensive line, 
and not that much depth at rushing, then you got to get the rush in first. And then because there's depth, that means, keep in mind, if you pick a DN, you know all the quarterbacks and wide receivers that are going, those guards are getting pushed down the draft. So you're still going to be able to get a good guard later in the draft because they're not a priority for anybody in the draft. There's not really a lot of places you could go on the Dolphins, though, right now and say, like, I would hate that pick based on it. Like, if they're going to be in a draft where they're going to get a stud a player. Wide receiver like, would be the one. Okay. Position. Well, I would say running back probably more than wide receiver. Running back. Even, running even, back, wide, even, back. Even, even wide receiver, there's a drop-off after the two. So, like, even if they thought, all right, we have a guy who's going to be amazing and going to add to this. Like, I can't hate it. I agree with you. It's right. probably lower, but man, you could, I mean, honestly, if you told me the Dolphins went tight end, uh, pass rush, defensive tackle, offensive tackle, safety, there's not a lot of places I'm going to look at the Dolphins right. and be like, oh, they blew it. They, I would they, probably they, only go wide receiver and running back would be the only two positions. And quarterback, if they, and quarterback would be the only two positions if they took. In the first two rounds, I'd be like, wait, you got way too many needs to be adding to, you know, adding to positions that you already have filled. Um, but yeah, I would if I had to go and 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 if I had to go first, it'd be interior D lineman, uh, offensive lineman, and then I would even go safety if one was available, and then rush in. Because uh, again. I don't want to waste a really high draft on a guy, even though you're going to be rotating, that you have those positions filled when they come back. Yeah, that was an interesting thing looking at Kuypers. And I know that uh, I think it was Dave Savage's Kuypers washed. But looking at his mock draft, I don't see any defensive tackles in the first round, which is odd because I've seen a lot of like uh, Johnny Newton and Sweat. Like I've seen uh, maybe Sweat's fallen because of the DWI. I don't know. but Right. Uh, I've seen like those guys in the twenties, and he doesn't have any of them going in the first right. round. Right, and so and that's that's kind of why you don't go that route, right? The draft sometimes determines who you draft, right? Um, if you can fill that position with a first round talent that falls into the second round, then good for you, right? There's a couple of D linemen that was supposed to be top 15 picks. Well, because of the way the draft is going with the quarterbacks, the wide receivers, the tight end, to even get to that point to where teams are going to start drafting D linemen, right? You're going to be late in the first round just because of what everybody else deemed to be important for their team. That's not even counting. The only other way this could happen, okay, here's how. If you have a team like New England who trades their pick and moves down, right, then you have teams moving up. That's almost going to guarantee another quarterback being taken. Those guys are going to get pushed down even more. Where is New England going to end up, right? So you don't know what they're going to do. Are they trying to rebuild from the inside out? Are they going to try to build with skill positions? Because now they're going to end up in the 20s or the teens or somewhere in there. So there's a lot of stuff that happens during the draft. That's why this is a crapshoot because it's not a crapshoot because of the talent of the players that are coming out and where they're ranked. It's a crapshoot because of what teams feel they need and the movement that goes on throughout the draft for those guys to try to get up and get what they want. And keep in mind, J.J. McCarthy – when when this all started, right after the Nets championship game, he was a late first rounder going in the 20s somewhere to, to a team. And in two months, he's now a top five pick. So just imagine how much things have changed that made him a top. The only guy in the entire draft that has been pretty much consistent with being the first guy taken is Bowers out of Georgia. That's it. Every, everything else has fluctuated. There's people that say, I would rather have Jaden Daniels over um, Caleb Williams. Yeah, not many, though. Like, not it's been pretty guys. It's it's been pretty steady that it's been Caleb Williams, but I get you. It's been. What about Drake May? 
Drake, there, there's guys. Wait, what did what did uh what did my man say? Drake May is Merrill a, Hodge. Merrill Hodge said Drake May is a, fired. get you fired, right? Like that's the kind of stuff that's out there. And for the record, he's uh he's mocked by Kuiper to the Patriots, so hopefully that's the case. And and you know these teams, and here's what kills here's what kills the draft because quarterback is the only position that I can think of that teams draft out of need and not out of ranking, right? It's the only position. So you go one, two, um, three, right? And who gets taken whatever. But then when you get to those other, like, teams moving up and they say Minnesota's going to try to move up and this team's going to try to move up to get a quarterback. Now you got guys that are in the top 10 that you would have never thought would be top 10 prospects. We'll uh, take a quick break. Back with more after this.
All right, welcome back. Tobin and Leroy here with you. Leroy, can we get a weather update from the Demesman and Dover Law Firm? Sure can. Your accident attorneys.com. Free consultations 24 7. Call me at 66954 more. It is quite breezy out right now. I'm guessing it's 15 miles an hour gusting to 2025. Oh, I see a gust right now. It's humming. That wind is coming out of the east southeast, and it is partly cloudy with temperatures just above eighty. Hmm. All right. Oh, no, golf. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me look. I was looking for my normal clouds over my house. They weren't moving as fast as the wind was howling with my trees outside. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, so, Leroy, Teron Armstead, yes, he was on uh, NFL Network, and he was whoa, about was he how was he did he limp to the set? I he was already sitting when they okay, the cut, so right. uh, hard to say. Oh, for- by the way, real quick, Mike yeah. Gasecki signed with the Bengals. Yeah, did that happen like three weeks ago? Oh, did it? Yeah, we didn't talk about it. I wasn't here. Okay, it's, okay, it wasn't very good last year. Yeah, well, he, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, look at me at throwing him in football. Oh, so you're scared of him with Joe Burrow? No, I just I just think that as long as they don't expect him to play on the end of the line of scrimmage, he'll be pretty good. Trust me, they don't expect him to do that. Right. Unless, uh, unless you want him for a movie theater to be a turnstile, you know. Whew. It's up to you. But uh, one guy who's not a turnstile, one healthy. He's a, he's a wall. Teron yes. Armstead. Uh, he was asked about the uh, the moves in the AFC East this year with uh, the Bills losing people, the Jets adding people. Armstead says he doesn't care. We got enough to win the whole th- the, the the division. You guys were so close last year and taking kind of a step back at the AFC East right now. Significant roster changes in Buffalo. New head coach, New England. Jets trying to pick up that momentum with Aaron Rodgers. Where do you see the biggest opportunity for the Dolphins as you look ahead? It's all in house. It's all in house. We don't really look at all the uh, the other moving pieces within the division or or around the league because we feel like we have enough. We're talented enough. We're we're skilled enough. We're tough enough. We just have to do. You know, it's it's now time to to show and prove that we can win those big games and live those big moments. So it, it doesn't matter who's traded. Who's it, we don't we don't look at that. Like we have enough to beat anybody at full strength, and and that's really our our. Our mindset, our mentality, we have that confidence, but we just have to go out and do it. Is there any shot he doesn't miss five games this year? Well, it's amazing to me. And I think Teron Armstead is one of the best to ever do it. I I believe that when he is there, he is a wall, like you said. Should he be the one saying, where it can beat anybody when healthy? Well, <laughs> I found that. That's what I found just a little. He uh, can, he's right. He does beat anybody when healthy. Well, technically, he has the perspective of being in the lineup and sitting on the bench watching the lineup. He yeah. gave the Dolphins 10 games last year, 13 his first year. When he said, remember, his first year, he told you he could have had season-ending foot surgery week one. Year before that, eight games. 2020 was the last time he played. For, well, he, he was the last time that he kind of gave you a full season, which when I say that, 14 games. So, been a while. He is, but that's, look, that's the reason he was available. The reason he was available is he was always hurt. Right. This is a front office. This is a GM who will roll the dice on a guy yeah. with an injury past. He will. He always has. He doesn't care about it. But but the the thing that's crazy about it is is that even with that, he's still like dominant. Oh yeah, right? he's great. Yeah, no, he's great. Um, he uh, you know, obviously had the talk this year. This was him on a uh, contemplating retirement. Uh, he said he he's thought about it the last couple of years. He thought about maybe hanging it up. Last time we really had a chance to talk with you, you were talking about contemplating retirement. What changed in your mind, or why did you decide it's not time to hang it up yet? In all honesty, the, the past two, maybe three seasons, I, I've taken time to have that evaluation period 
to really process. I mean, this game comes with a, a lot, a lot of physical, mental, mental and emotional toll. So uh, just really taking taking time to to process and, like I said, evaluate what I wanted to do because when I'm when I'm doing this thing, I would never want to be halfway in or it's a full commitment, full investment. So this this off season, I was a little bit more vocal about that evaluation period, which which raised a lot more coverage. But um, I've 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 went through that process for the past two or three years. Well, I'm glad he's coming back. And I would say, I can tell you what also helps that. Them big fat ass checks. It's like sixteen million dollars this year. <laughs> That's a million a week, Whew. just under a million a week. Good. Now, listen, I'm not a rocket scientist, right? But man to man, mm-hmm. it's hard to give up a million dollars a week. A lot of money. You feel you're you're gonna feel like you could dial it up no matter how much it hurts. Right? Hey, hey, I summons it like them WWE. <laughs> we, come on, Teron! A million, a million. Shake we'll, it up. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll mix things up coming up next.
Welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Let's get to our mixy part of the day. It's time for the mix back. Brought to you by Broward Health. Well, into your future. Dan Day sitting in for Frog Boy today. Where is this frog boy? We, you know, where we, he hasn't he hasn't chirped in on our group chat lately, Leroy. Is he actually no. enjoying his time off? I don't know. I thought he was just off for a couple of days. Hold on. No, I think he's off up until Friday. No, he'll be back tomorrow. I think is he? I think I think Vlad might be in tomorrow. Oh, okay, I'm not positive. Um, what's the last thing we got from him? Oh yeah, he he did yell about Jimmy Butler last night in our group chat. He he said just quick question. He goes quick question, Jimmy. <laughs> What the bleep are you doing? <laughs> what do we got in the mixed bag today, Dan Day? Well, to borrow a term from soccer, since the U.S. Women's National Team won the She Believes Cup last night, and of course we got Inter Miami and Monterey tonight at ten thirty. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win is exactly kind of what Tiger Woods answered when asked about this year's Masters, or at least I believe I could win. What do you feel like you're capable of doing this week? What do you believe that you can do this week? If everything comes together, I think I can get one more. Huh. Okay. Uh, okay. Hold on. He thinks he can. He thinks he can. <clears throat> I like the confidence of a goat. <laughs> can I can I add one small point to this? Everything coming together means that first you have to play four rounds, which you haven't done in a year. Okay. So let's just start there. Let's not even start about the level of golf that needs to be played because Tiger in all these events that he's played in, has played one of the two rounds well, Thursday or Friday. He's never played consistently for both days because he gets sore. Saturday he comes out and he plays and he struggles. And Sunday it's a crapshoot whether he'll even show up. So that's been his path. I don't know what, you know, his health is as of right now. But I know the last few tournaments that he's played in, this is what it's looked like. So I don't know if, like, if he plays three of the four days like he does on his best day, yes, I believe that. But it's very hilly at Augusta. It's very demanding walking. And he hasn't finished a tournament that he's entered in a while. Are there any rules against getting a piggyback ride from your caddy? <laughs> Nobody wanted to carry him like uh <laughs> carry him like they carried Giannis well, off the court. Like a baby Bjorn, you know, like a like you know, oh, just like off. piggyback him? No. Yeah, could could Tiger I, Woods I, get I'm a really sure that's not. Could he get him like a giant Icelander, you know, like a, one of those world's strongest men? And then like, he's like, listen, I don't need golf advice. I just what, need you to carry me. What if he just has one of those Captain America things and he just slides down every hill? Yes. Yeah, so I was going to say, if he rolls down like we do when we're kids. Exactly. Perfect. Like, save the legs. No, I, I uh, just think it's a, it's a health thing. But I will say this is that I don't know whether this is it as far as how healthy he can get. Or maybe it's been, you know, a process where he's going to be have gotten healthier each time. It's hard to tell with the way he's been golfing and, and getting out of tournaments. So uh, if everything comes together, like even if his health comes together, he still hasn't played four rounds of good golf since before his accident. So I don't I don't know how you're going to, you know. You have to admit, going into the final day, if he's on the top of the leaderboard, it's pandemonium across the world. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. sure. Absolutely. I've always said this. Jack won his last tournament at 46. That I was never going to discount Tiger until at least that age. However, the surgeries and the injuries and stuff like that. Yeah, Jack never have, drove over a cliff. Right. Have come into play. And now that changes my my attitude a little bit tiger uh 48 years old will be 49 in december right 49 he can still hit it out there it's not a matter of length it's not a matter of ability 
It's a matter of health and whether he can walk four rounds of golf around that golf course and still be able to perform. I'm telling you, giant world strongest man, baby Bjorn, save those legs. <laughs> still think quote of the day is Jack never drove over a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it. what else you got, Dan Day, in the mixed bag? Last night's Boston Celtics Milwaukee Bucks game. Not the greatest game in the world, but it was memorable. This would be the first time in NBA history that a team did not attempt a free throw. Wow. So yeah, there was only two all game. Celtics zero, Boston two when it comes to attempts for the whole game when it comes you, to free throws. You know what that sounds like? Hmm? It was basically a three point contest. Man. How about I bet that? you I bet you they shot over I between the both of them, I bet you they shot over 93 pointers. Uh I'm gonna go check. Just under. Right. Think about that though. Think about that. How crazy is that? Hit the same amount. Both hit 17, but uh the, the Celtics got up. They shot 52 from downtown. Right. And uh the Bucks shot 36. Well, one of two for the only uh, free throws was Giannis. He had two attempts. How does that even happen? That's crazy. Because everybody was shooting jumpers. Uh, Still, you know, Boston shoots more threes than anybody. Yeah. Which is why, look, if you do end up with them, you know, you should be concerned if Duncan Robinson can't come back because you need you need to be able to fight fire with fire. You don't think you can just run them off the three point line? I mean, we have length. There's going to be games though where they get hot. Like you could run off the three point yeah. line, but a lot of times it's going to come down to a make or miss okay. on on certain games. Probably like the longer the series goes, yeah, you'll slow them down. But there's also games we see in the playoffs all the time where like the team just gets hot. They had the momentum from three, and yep. you, you if you can't match that, and really the only guy who they have on the squad who could light it up like Duncan is Tyler, or or uh, maybe Terry Rozier, maybe. The yeah, dude maybe had like 33s in like three or uh, four yeah, games. Yeah, but Tyler's a better shooter than Terry, just as you know, what? career wise. He's a better shooter than Terry, career wise. Is he? Yeah, Tyler's a, Tyler, Tyler's a very good three point shooter. Give us one more, Dan Day, in the mixed bag. Yeah, we heard from Doc Rivers earlier about the injury to Giannis and how it might affect the team. Let's hear further from Doc Rivers on how concerned he is about Giannis Antetokounmpo. Injuring that calf muscle that runs kind of down the sides of both sides of your leg. Well, that's a good question. Uh, hi, I would say that. Uh, but, you know, he's honest. I think everyone uh, probably feels the same way as I do right now. So uh, we're just going to hope for the best. Wow. All right. Fingers crossed for Doc Rivers. Yeah. <clears throat> Man. He lost that hoarseness and got it back after like 12 seconds <laughs> coaching the Bucks. How far, <laughs> can, uh, how far can the Bucks go without Giannis in the playoffs? Depends on who they match up with, but I think if they face, if they face Miami or Philly without him, they're in trouble. They're in I trouble. Mean, we know how far Damian Lillard's ceiling is. It's the conference finals. And he's had CJ McCollum and Joseph Nurkic. So yeah, the Bucks are in trouble, nonetheless. Yeah, you lose. Your, look, you lose your best player. You're in trouble. There's not really, I mean, a, a, any team. You know, if the Celtics lose Tatum. If you know Embiid or Maxi go down, if uh, we see what Johnson happened with Embiid. Down, yeah, like it's it's not going to be a knock on the Bucks. Like I'm not expecting them. But if you told me they lost in the first round, they lost in the first round last year with a a banged up Giannis. Right. So no Giannis, nah, not great, dude. Not great. All right, that's the mixed bag there for you. Brought to you by Broward Health. Well, into your future as uh, your Miami Heat back in action tonight against the Dallas Mavericks. I'll be boots on the ground for that one. 615 is preheat. Do you hate uh, road home back-to-backs or home road back-to-backs? Seems like travel back-to-backs suck, right? Yeah, uh, it, it's – but, you know, I guess – I mean, it, I guess it's Atlanta. It's not that bad. What is that? Like a two-hour yeah. trip? It was also double overtime. True. That's what I'm worried about. You have a lot of forty-plus minute guys. Are you gonna come right back and play again? 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Tyler's uh if if, if they're cautious with Tyler and then maybe put Terry back in. We'll see. I don't know how bad this Terry neck thing is. Work it out. Work it out. You want to do like the Tyson? Put the uh put the yeah. weights on the on the the headgear. Stretch it out. Get go get a massage from a legitimate masseuse. Of course. You gotta put you gotta say that now. We're yeah, not one of those around North Miami that has like masseuse outside a house. <laughs> Be wary of those. <laughs> Take a quick break. Get the little cat talk out up next.
Ah, welcome back, everybody. This is hockey music right here, right? This is like drop the gloves. They throw the they're throwing this on. They're throwing this on. Or when they get back to a power play, you're throwing on some Papa Roach. Jacoby. You know, you know like that P. Roach Leroy for a little hockey hockey music? No, uh, I'm more of a uh alien ant farm guy. Oh. Oh, good call. <laughs> good call. They'll play that in Red Band. They'll play that in our barn. Andy, are you okay? Uh, criminal. Let's get yep. to some cat talk here. Brought to us by our friends over at Celsius. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out when it's game time. Make Celsius part of your play and get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of your Florida Panthers. Winners last night, 2 nothing over the Ottawa Senators, who have been a bit of a Panthers doormat this year. Uh, poor Brady Kachuk. He definitely uh, wishes he was probably down here with his brother. You know, that's tough, though. I'm sorry. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, speaking of tough, Paul Maurice, let's uh, – Hear from the Panthers head coach after the victory. What do you have to say? Uh, I hope so. Well, coach Anthony Stolarz gets the shutout and yep. the primary assist on Antonio Lindell's goal. How would you describe the value he's provided? Oh, immeasurable because beyond the numbers, which are league leading in some departments, he's also been a really important relationship guy with Sergey. I mean, they get along incredibly well support each other, cheering for each other. And that's a really important thing for Sergey. It is not so much at his age, to have somebody to, to cheer for and that cheers for him. They, they're unique. They got, a really, uh, they got a really good thing going. So I'm happy for Anthony. He's worked hard to change his game to get better. I'm not change. He just improved his game from training camp to where he is now. He's very, very good. Were you always planning on going to the store? Yeah, I messed that one up this morning. I mean, I. I say Sergey so often that it's just kind of in my head. It was Anthony Stoller's coming up, but my mouth tricked me. Yeah, I messed what? that one up. Sorry. <laughs> what? What my wait, 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 hey Tobes. Whoops! You can use that one now. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> I not. I need to hear that one more wait, time. I, I said that in, in my head. I said that, but my mouth tricked me. Were you always planning on going to Stoller? Yeah, I messed that one up this morning. I mean, I. I say Sergey so often that it's just kind of in my head. It was Anthony Stoller's coming up, but my mouth tricked me. Yeah. <laughs> my mouth tricked. Hey, you know what? In my head, I had this. My mouth tricked me. I'm gonna write that down. Paul Maurice got that one going forward. Oh, that, that uh, I'm telling you what. If you ever use that line, that is an automatic minus one. Why? The coach can use it, but I can't. <laughs> I'd minus one his ass if he could hear it. Uh, Panthers at 104 points right now. They're on top. Uh, they're fourth right now in the conference. And uh, they have the, of course, Maple Leafs. That'll round out their schedule. Next up for the Cats will be Columbus tomorrow. So everybody gets done on Sunday? I think basketball, so. Basketball yeah. and hockey? Or hockey gets yeah. done on Tuesday? Hockey's done. No, on hockey's Tuesday. done next Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. If Toronto has a game after us after we play them to end the season. I know that. Yeah. Canadians are weird. Except you're Canadians. I love them. <laughs> and Amy Audibert, who's going to join us. Yes. In Ten minutes. And walk this one back. You know what? Strike that back. You know, it was back. in my head, but my mouth tricked me. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Other headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. The Heat win last night. They win in double overtime. Tyler Hero, boy wonder. He led the Heat in scoring 33 points. He uh, continues to look uh, really good coming back from injury. And um, But, I mean, man, the, the team needed Jovic down the stretch to, to settle things down. Jovic yesterday... He had 23 points, 8 of 12 from the floor, 5 of 8 from downtown, 8 rebounds, uh, 1 assist, and it just, you know, just looked really tremendous. Jimmy, Jimmy had a good game up until really the very end. I don't know what the hell he was doing at the end of the game. Oh, my goodness. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy had 25 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, 3 steals. I love seeing him uh, start off the second half with a pick 6. Like, that... I think is an un, it's an undervalued thing that he does to really just disrupt on defense and go get easy points for the Heat. So that was a good thing to see. Uh, Bam, Bam was like, whew, 
oh, what the hell? He, first of all, he hit a couple of threes in the first half. One was off the window. I do like the uh, the Jimmy to Bam uh, connection for the three, Leroy. But second half, he scored just two points. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know. They tried to get it to him, but the, here's here's what I hate. You have to get somebody the ball in the context of your offense or of the 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 movement, right? Too many times at the end of that game or in the fourth quarter, they tried to force it in the BAM and it and it turned into a turnover. Oh, they were right? turning the ball willy. Right. Millions. And and I would say I get what you want to do, but it could also be their game plan to keep the ball out of BAM's hands. And so that's going to create other opportunities for other people. You got to just go with it. And and that's when I say, when when you say, oh, so-and-so needs to touch the ball, so-and-so needs to, listen, they could be over there saying, we're going to get the ball out of his hands. And, and you just got to play basketball. I get so frustrated when you hear an announcer or somebody say that without saying, okay, well, look at what they're doing in defense. They were packing in the paint, daring you to throw it to bam. And every time you threw it, hands got in the way, and it ended up being a turnover. Sometimes I'll uh, I'll have nightmares just about Clint Capella getting offensive rebounds. You know, like I'll just be tossing and turning, and, and somebody like, hey, 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 what's wrong? Like Capella, you know, like it's just it, it, just think about him getting rebounds all the time. Well, you put an A in front of his name, it's a song. Then we got pitch perfect. <laughs> uh, the Marlins are a one, one in eleven. Jesus, they almost made a comeback yesterday. No, stop. No, no they did. Stop. A couple but runs. Even if they, even if they would have came back, then somebody was gonna have to go out there and pitch to them. Sixto gave you, uh, you know. Something. I mean, he still gave up a run. Yeah, but it wasn't like he got obliterated, you know? Is he throwing heat? Or is he still trying to throw that 85-mile-an-hour He was throwing it. I did not see him humming it up, Leroy. I did not see him humming it up. Because I think, like I've said this before, I think these guys come into the Major League Baseball wanting to show everybody how hard they can throw the ball that the art of pitching gets lost. And 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 now they they get into a position where they don't know how to pitch. Yeah, I mean, look, we have the. I mean, their two through four is Soto, Judge, and Stan for now while he's healthy. Uh, well, you know, something's going to get tweaked, and it's scary. It's the scary. It's a scary. You know, it's a scary lineup that they have, and we have, you know, our boy De La Cruz is having to carry everybody. Tim Anderson, he he did some work yesterday. Yeah, but stole, do, stole we, a bag, as they say. Are we are we are we getting like? You're just looking at every looted, looted in riot numbers. It, every game just feels like that. It's like if someone's got to do. You're something. so far. You're so far down, right? Like two games ago, they had one guy, the only guy to get a hit, and he got two of them. Dude, I mean, we got after this, you got the Yankees and then but don't we have the Braves in here next week? We get the Braves and the Giants. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to that game one week from today. It's a 12 10 start. Oh, man. Leroy red solo cup all over the place at noon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and there's nobody's going to be there. Yeah. So I'm not even worried about anybody looking at my red solo cup at noon so, on a Wednesday at a Marlins game. Nah. So just so we're clear, we have the Yankees tonight and then the Braves. Yeah. Who have the biggest run differential in the league outside of Cleveland? It's only 11 awesome. games, though. I don't care. All right. What's our run differential? Oh, minus, minus 33. Minus 33? With the worst? Tied for the worst. Who's the other team? Colorado. And I bet you they're not one in 11. Three and nine. They still won two, other, two more games. The only team that has just two wins is the White Sox. Everybody else is at least three. It's baseball. How do you not run into by by accident? Yeah. How can not another team's pitcher have a bad day and you rock them a little bit? <sighs> All right. I'm gonna try and ease up here. I gotta, I gotta, gotta get ready for Amy. I got how many more months of this do we have? Five. 
So well, we're definitely not going to go into October, so we don't have to worry about that. So when do they trade everybody? Uh, tomorrow. Like when does that get going? <laughs> Just tomorrow. Well, you know, how disappointing! Like if they if they trade Jazz and a couple other guys, how like, right? How disappointed am I going to be? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Right because now. because yeah. this I just had an article come out yesterday talking about the manager's going to look for new opportunities a week into the season. But but here's the other deal is that you know what this looks like. We've seen this over and over again when when a new regime comes in, right, and they say this: we need to rebuild our uh, farm system, right? You know how they build that farm system is get rid of all your players. Shemitah says Avi Garcia stole a bag too. Different type of bag. <laughs> One full of cash. <laughs> so he, rich and he stinks. Uh, he's right up there. I mean, he's he's going to go down right there with Wei and Chen. Uh, Wei and Chen, Heath uh, Bell is the wait, biggest. Wait, Wei Wei and Chen, Wei and Chen never should have got that money. The owner got duped. So dumb. Oh, yeah. Just sign this uh, two-year opt-out we'll have. And then, uh, you know, if he doesn't want to do it, he's guaranteed for 80. Sure. Sign me up. Idiots. <sighs> My favorite Canadian, Amy Audibert. Don't just text.
Ah, welcome back, everybody. Toby and Leroy here with you. Five sixty WQAM. Well, hello, Jennifer. Hello, Miami you. Heat. Hello, Jennifer. Miami Heat. They win last night in double overtime against the Hawks, and they're back at it tonight. Yep, against the Dallas Mavericks. You guys, of course, can hear that right here. Five sixty WQAM. Six fifteen preheat with Solana. And Tommy Tig, and then Jason Jackson, and our next guest, Amy Audibert, will have the call for you from the Kaseya Center. You can also see her fantastic coverage on Bally Sports Sun. Amy joins us on the Toilet of Hollywood guest line shop. Hundreds of toilets indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toilet of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. Amy, how are you? I'm great, guys. I always say I I don't know how players play back to backs and coaches because like <laughs> it's tough. Like even for us, try to get our prep done and work done. And I didn't even travel, so I'm great. It's a game day. I love game days, but they are tight. <laughs> back to back has to be the toughest thing in that, especially road to yeah. home or home to road. Yeah. Like the travel. Like I don't. I can't even imagine what's. Football panics when you go Sunday to Thursday, right? <laughs> so I can't imagine going back to back. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. I, I know that like people get frustrated sometimes. Although, how, how come so and so doesn't look sharp? Well, because <laughs> at the end of the day, I know they're definitely gifted, <laughs> but they're still human beings. <laughs> right. So it's every back to back to me is just that reminder, you know? Like not to mention double overtime. Here today, oh time. my gosh. <laughs> We're watching it, and it's the best part is Will and I, we, we always open close games with, like, kind of the finish package. And we start our fin finish package, like, start editing it at the 445 mark in an, in regulation. You know, Jimmy had that and one, and you're like, good, let's go, let's cook, let's get on that plane and go. And then, like, by the second overtime, you're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you got to play tomorrow. But it, it, that's that's what it is. So here we go. So yesterday, uh, my favorite part of the game was bar none, Nikola Jovic. I've been so pleased watching him. Uh, for our audience uh, who did not hear Jimmy Butler's reaction to him last night, Dan, if you could have this just uh, as Jimmy, very proud of Nikola Jovic, a man whose picture is in his locker and, uh, and seeing the kind of growth that he's had. But here was Jimmy after the game. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I mean, that dude's been doing that for a long time. I, I've seen it. You know, I've seen the work that he puts in. I see the film that he watches. I understand how much that he cares about the game and how much he cares about winning. So, I mean, I, I know who he is. I know the type of player he is. And I know, honestly, how much money he's going to make in his league. What were your impressions of, of how Jovic has been playing, Amy, not just last night, but just in general? He's, he feels like he's he's rounded into something here. Yeah, I think, first of all, on the personal side, anyone who knows Nico is just happy for him because he's just a super awesome person, too. But if you take that out of it, uh, I'm – it's, it's awesome because he's been patient in terms of just like, you know, Nico will go from starting to not playing at all, you know, and, and then like just kind of having his spurts. And then last year really having to work behind the scenes. So I love the fit in the starting lineup. I think he understands that he might not shoot the ball 20 times, especially when he's out there with Tyler, Jimmy and Bam, he probably shouldn't, but he's a great catch and shoot three point shooter at, at 6'10. He's getting it over top of a lot of closeouts. Uh, but then he's at his best, I think, when he's actually in the open court with the ball in his hands and whether it's his finesse finishes or facilitating. And he's getting to do a lot of that. But for me, I would say Tobin is just like the confidence. Like you're starting to see the automatic happen and you don't get that without reps. So this is like all part of the process. Um, it's come together really nice for him. But it also helps when we've seen Jimmy and Nico a little bit of their relationship because it's on Instagram. When you when you feel like you've got guys like that in your corner, of course you're more empowered to go out there. And when, by the way, he played a career high 39 minutes in a double overtime game last night. That's your confidence right there. Like right. double overtime and coaches got me out there. So I'm really excited for him, not just for this remainder of whatever happens here, but for the future. Um, something like this can be the foundation of a young player. Amy, I wanted to ask you this because I've always, this is always, because I've been begging for him to play last year because my whole thing was, He's been a pro since he was 15 or 16 years old playing against grown men. That situation versus playing college basketball for four years. How is, you know, Nico coming over at 1920? Uh, is he farther along than, say, uh, Jaime Jaquez, who only played against college kids who are not going to be playing at this level? 
that's a tough one because Jaime is one of the more mature right. rookies that you'll see out there. So, but I would say to to that point, Nico's mature a little bit beyond his years because the one thing about college basketball is they tell you where to be, what time to be there. Like you know, everything's kind of giving you got to show up and work. But uh, for Nico to kind of have that professional setting, sure, maybe that made it a little bit more of a uh, transition smoother for him. But I would say. He, he had to put a lot of muscle on, right? Like, yeah, yes, yeah. he's playing grown men. He still had to put a lot of muscle on. He still put a lot of work in behind the scenes. Yeah. And then don't forget last year, he's 19. He still is not legally old enough to buy a drink in the United States of America. <laughs> Yet here he is starting in the, in playing minutes and, you know, maybe not having family here all the time and all that. So uh, it just, it speaks to, uh, again, his just emotional maturity to be able to come out here and and continue and, and then stay locked in. I know that a lot of people wanted him to play a lot more last year, but I think that he did have to work do a lot of, to his body, right? To kind of just sustain. Listen, when he's driving in there, you get hit. I think I do believe NBA hits in the paint are a little bit different than NBA hits in college. Right. So you have to be able to sustain that. So and defensively, I think he's also making some strides, right? He's coming more confident on the defensive end and with his length, you know, you're learning how to utilize that on the perimeter is going to be so big for him, but you can really already see him getting there in small steps. So again, just super bright future for Nico. How have you uh, liked Tyler Hero's return so far? Oh, this is not by accident today. <laughs> I'm actually kind of feeling hopefully he's out there tonight. Oh, who hasn't loved Tyler Hero's return so far? Um, if anyone's watched any of the coverage that I've been involved in, the offensive woes have been what they have been for Miami. I think it's not a coincidence that Tyler has not been available in a lot of those games just because of his ability to self-create. And create for others because of that. You know, we know Tyler is so great in the mid-range, coming off the screens, long range. I know Spo Watts talked about getting him into the paint. He talked about rim finishes a bit more, which he can get to as well. But then there's the intangibles, not in the big moments. Yet another guy now. So Terry's established himself as a clutch player before he got here. But now when he's here, he's had some big moments. I don't think Jimmy Butler's ever not going to to be a threat as a clutch player because of what he's done and who he is and everybody around the league knows it. Now you're adding another guy on there. Like you better not leave. To, you're going to, okay. You're going to double off on Tyler. All right. You know what I mean? So I think it's, that's like also an exciting part is he's one of the most confident guys and you are in your confidence from getting in the gym and Tyler is never shy about, you know, I think he's proud of his work and he should be. And that's why in those moments, he's so calm. And even that floater he hit uh, late game yesterday, yeah. right? Just so yeah. like huge moment. And it's like his body language is the same at the beginning of the game as it is taking a shot in double overtime to, you know, extend or win or whatever it is. And that speaks to his work. We call that the Flamingo. <laughs> yeah, I like it. What are you thinking? Like if you, if you imagine a Flamingo playing basketball, oh my one God. leg. Why? In, that would be its perfect shot. So I figure wow. it, goes, it used to, I know you used to call it the baby float, but he's growing up, so he needs a, a more mature name for the shot now. So we're, we're, we're wavering between Flaming Goat or Float Mingo. I like Float Mingo. Don't You're do it, Amy. Amy don't, don't. You know, do it. feel don't. free to use it on the broadcast. I will. <laughs> I see it though. Like I see the. I see what you're talking about. So that's. that's awesome. You can imagine it, right? If we were to, if we were to animate a a, a flamingo play, that that would be its money shot. The balance on the one leg. I'm always very impressed by that with Tyler. Yeah, yeah Amy, I like that. You think that you know? Because I always wonder because Terry and and Tyler are very similar. Um. How does that work together? Well, I think that's one of the more unfortunate parts of when Tyler kind of got injured again, was they were just starting to kind of try yeah. to figure that out, right? Yeah. Similar in that they can both get their shots off and create, but I mean, when I you watch them play, I don't think they're very similar at all. I think Tyler yeah. has so much more length. I think Terry's got a lot more speed. So I think with guys like that, you have to continue to build reps. And for Tyler, there's that learning curve. And he talked about it when Terry got here of knowing when to cut and when to kind of just be more of a floor spacer and a knockdown right. three-point shooter. And that's going to have to go vice versa for Terry, right? There's going to be some times when you got to give Tyler the ball and let him cook. And right. I think at the end of the day, and I know that some people were saying, oh, this doesn't work. I don't like it. You got to give it some time because I will always say this about the team that I've been in my second season with the Heat. The common goal if that's, if that's the same across the board, then you're going to be okay. And I really do believe genuinely that these guys all like want to win. 
you don't hear a lot of like the ego stuff, me, 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 like these guys want to win at the end of the day. Now they may feel that they can help this team win more if they had the ball in their hands more, but they want to win. Mm -hmm. And if that's the foundation, if that's what's driving everybody in a locker room, then you can always kind of work with that. And I do believe that. And especially like the leaders in this, in this locker room is that it is, they want to win games and it starts with Spo too. So um, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting them both out there because it's just more options. Uh, how concerned are you with Duncan Robinson's injury? Because that he didn't look right coming back. I didn't like reading the quotes that I read from him. And I mean, Amy, like there was an argument this guy was the third best player for the team this year. He was just like he he's he was so important to whenever they had success. So a Duncan Robinson murky future, that's a big blow for a for a playoff run. Yeah, I mean, I, first of all, I would say, like, I just hope that he it's more of that he just needs to continue to rest and rehab. Backs are – anyone's had back injuries, and I certainly have. It's not – you know, it's your arms, it's your legs, it's like your core. Everything you do kind of stems from your core and your back. So that's a tough spot that if you're not feeling well – to compensate for, you know, you could have a sore elbow and still run really fast and try to kind of, you know, there's certain, certain things you can do with the back. It's tough. So it's concerning because to your point, I think when Duncan's on fire and he's out there, but it's not just the shooting. I mean, we talk about, he's an automatic floor spacer and that I don't think that's ever going to change. He's established himself as one of the best shooters in the league. So Duncan go stand in the corner and like you're stretching defense, but it's the fact that I think what, took him up a level this year was his attack mode was his confidence getting to the cup and doing all those fun um, passes or like hesitation pass Wemby. Those moments were to me the best moments, but then also I thought at, especially at the beginning of the season um, when Tyler went out and he had to kind of really step into that role defensively, I thought he really, that's something that you really worked on in the off season. And you could see because at the beginning of the year, people were like attacking him and trying to attack him. And he had a couple like, good gate warrior like he was standing up for himself and he was getting right. stops and mm -hmm. it's tough to do either of those it's tough to play on either side of the ball if you're sore you're stiff or you're not right so it's certainly concerning but at the same time I know what you guys know right like I mean you hope that it's just an issue if he needs more time or more treatment or more stabilizing type stuff but I just it's unfortunate this is the game and when you look around the league no one's feeling bad for anyone who has an injury because there's some other injuries around the league that are concerning. Amy, you know, the biggest issue with, with all of this is, is that the only thing that heals it is time and you don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, man. right. 79 tonight. Right. 79? Right. right. So, so yeah. that's, that's the issue. He's like, Hey, what will help Duncan Robinson about two months of rest? Well, you don't yeah. have two months. I know what would be really nice is not have to, play in next week and have that yeah. <laughs> time, you know, yeah. but we'll see what happens. Now you're, you're hoping Orlando drops, you're hoping Cleveland drops. So, uh, but you could still win out and then destiny's in your hands kind of thing. So we'll see. You guys can watch Amy uh, on Bally sports sun. You can listen to her of course, right here on the Miami heat audio experience, your flagship five hundred and sixty WQAM with the great Jason Jackson. We have coverage starting tonight at 6.15. Amy, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks Amy. guys. Yeah, we'll see you soon, Tobin. <laughs> we'll uh, take a quick break. We will get to our favorite Wednesday game, Rats of a Ship. That's next. Rats of a Ship.
rats off a ship. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you. Thanks to Amy Audibert for joining the show. Always does a fantastic job on the Heat broadcast. And always appreciate her giving us some time. Uh, the NBA Leroy apparently has announced that the Miami Heat will be, this is from uh, Barry Jackson, uh, that the Heat could be stuck into the play-in tonight if they lose to Dallas. If Cleveland beats Memphis and Orlando wins at the Bucks, of course, they aren't going to have Giannis. Um, if the Heat want to get to sixth, they need to win out. Magic need to lose two of three. They had uh, two games against the Bucks and one against the Sixers. Which the only one that's going to matter is the Sixers because for some reason the Bucks can't shake two. So you just imagine when it gets to that point, they may be sitting everybody. Could be. So that's what you got to watch tonight. But, of course, you got to take care of your own business first. The person who always takes care of their business, the murderer, Jennifer, J. Fig. Unless there's a time frame. What do you got today, J. Fig, for rats off a ship? Really, Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the sass. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh. Come on. What happened? Remember no, all that crap? Wait, wait, wait. Sass. Remember all that crap you were carrying? And I strapped it to my back and escorted you to your car? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said you didn't have to do that, and I appreciate you for no. doing so, okay? I don't know how you're throwing this on me. <laughs> I'm just Leroy, saying. Leroy, 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 you're not, from the I'm south. Not, oh, you shouldn't be trying to get accolades for doing the right thing with I know I didn't I and I said to her I said to her it is I said to her it is no big deal I said I would hope that if somebody saw Mel struggling with a bag or carrying a bag that they will offer the same that's exactly what I said it was not a big deal but I'm just saying no I don't hate but, but now you're just saying no, I'm just saying because she threw me she threw me out there like okay Ooh. Are you guys ready for number one? Yes. Yes. Rory McIlroy completing career Grand Slam and winning the Masters. Rats off a ship. Not going to happen. Dude is a choke artist in every major not, not, not for the last the 10 years. He wins fake things like the Players or the Canadian Open. But when it comes to the big four, all of a sudden He's he'll choke and wilt away. He's won every other one. Yeah, but not for like a decade. All right. So That's I'm going to say this. And you're going to be shocked. Hmm? I'm rats off a ship. Wow. Rats off a ship. Not because I don't think he can win the Masters. But the way he's been playing, I don't think he can win this Masters. Stinking up the joint lately? He just hasn't been playing well. He... He finally got it in order. He got a backdoor top 10 this past weekend, which means that the leaders were like at seven, uh, I want to say 14 or 15. No, they were at 17 or 18 under, and he was at 10 under and got a top five. So they're going to say, ooh, Rory's in form. He's a top five. No, you weren't close, okay? So that's why I'm saying that, that he is one of the best drivers of the ball. He's hitting his irons crooked. He puts really well. This is not the place to go into hitting your irons crooked because it, you get some you get some tough spots on the greens. You can't make birdie, and you're just hanging on hoping you can make par. So I'm rats off a ship on Rory this year. What about you, JFig? Well, I know nothing about golf, so I'm going to go ahead and say rats off a ship. Rat, rat, rats off a ship. Perfect. Dan Day? And agree with Leroy. And me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where's your guys' guts? Where's your guys' belief? <laughs> Where's your guys' romanticism for the game on any sport? I'm not so, rats off the ship on this one. Wow. I think Rory McIlroy is going to shock the world. He and Tiger Woods, last day, final two, playing against each other. Oh, it's going to be a glorious day. I really do think Roy McElroy will win, not rats off a ship. Mm. All right. Dan Day has faith. 
What's number two, J Fig? Well, it's official. Mm -hmm. There is now a Taylor Swift class in college. It is now mm -hmm. offered at UM. Are you opposed to taking the class? Yeah, I'm rats off a ship. I really well, like rats off a what, ship. What am I going to learn? First of all, I don't play instruments, so I can't be Taylor Swift. I think I could write songs as long as there's an original song and it's just a parody about uh, a Miami athlete or coach. True. So I don't really need a class for that. So what are they going to teach me? Like, you know, how to do revenge via songwriting? I don't I don't understand. Like, what am I learning from the Taylor Swift class? I'm rats off a ship. Okay. Leroy? I am also rats off a ship. Rat, rat, rats off a ship. Look. Swifty is the queen of whatever she wants to be. Everybody says she's really nice and she's done nothing wrong in my eyes. This is too damn much. If there was a baking class, like if we could learn how to make those Cinnabons that uh, Bernie Kozar was talking about, I'd take that class. <laughs> you never know. It is probably offered. It is probably offered. Well, we know where your rats are going to be. Like, what do you want to say on this, JFig? So uh, I would love to know what the class entails. Like, I would like to know what they have in their lessons plans. Because what act what are we actually learning in this Taylor Swift class? Are we mm. learning about her past? Her career? The way that she know. writes music? I don't have deets on it. I want to know. But if it is about songwriting, I would love to to take it because i love songwriting classes and i have taken songwriting classes before and i really enjoyed them so i'm not rats off a ship i don't need a songwriting class i know how to write songs <laughs> have you guys not heard jaime dan day where are your rats with Taylor Swift 101 there's two classes that everyone wants to and aspires to take in college. Of course, it's sex ed, hard to get into. Woman studies for both sides of the room. Oh no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. Oh, I yeah. took women, I took women's studies in college. Oh, you because wanted my, to. because my my tutor was the teacher. And it was I hate Leroy semester. It is that, yes. <laughs> you, know that in, you don't know that going in. You don't know that going I in. It's a class like that too. It's called it, music theory. I hate Jennifer. <laughs> it was every time they said something about women, they all looked at me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I'm black. We in the same boat, baby. <laughs> nope. Uh uh. Well, there's now a third must take class, and that is Taylor Swift. The class at University of Miami. Yes, 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 yes. Tell me you guys never took a crip class in college. I took linguistics. I took marriage and family. I thought he was going to say linguine. <laughs> you take ballroom dancing, golf, tennis, all that other stuff. And you're saying that's okay, but I'm rats off a ship when it comes to something about Taylor Swift, which is a cultural icon and something that does define a lot of what this society is made up of. Uh, you make a valid point. Still rats off. This is why we keep Dan Day around. Yeah, still rats off. If I could get into that class, I probably would need so many credits to get in. That would be top of my list of classes that you I think it's going to be filled. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. They, said it, they said it filled up immediately. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Who wouldn't want to take it's that? It's like getting concert tickets for her. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, she don't not, bring she me back not, to that. She's time. not teaching it, right? Of course not. Oh, right. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure teaching. Goodness. She might. She might have something to do with it, where they she sends in like little videos. What if she made an appearance? Oh, no, amazing. that would be wild. <laughs> that would be wild if she just shows up. Let's just hear from her herself. What? Uh, <laughs> what's number three, J Fig? Luka Doncic's ex. I'm sorry. I did not say that word. I said act. Sorry. Uh, I'm rats off a ship on Luca's act. You know, like he's a big whiner. Rat, rat, rats off a you ship. You know, he doesn't ever stop complaining to the officials. You know, he thinks he's so he, he thinks he's so cute with his footwork, and until he decides to leave Dallas and take his talents out where, uh, elsewhere, you know, to a more beautiful city. I, unfortunately, my rats are off a ship. I will never be rats off a ship with a 39 point triple double. No, yeah, I don't care. Like you can I will be tonight. you can moan, you can do whatever. His act is gonna get him an MVP, right? His act is like, yeah, do I hate the whining? Of course, 
But are the numbers there? Come on. I'm never going to be a rat's off a ship on that game. Uh Uh-uh. No chance. JPEG? No. I'm not rats off a ship. Oh, okay. Those rats hanging on for dear life. Keep it uh, up. What about you, Dan Day? Anybody that beats you with an old man body, old man game, like you're down at the YMCA or CYO, that act never gets old. So I am not rats off a ship. Everyone complains to the refs. Everyone thinks they get fouled on every play. Everyone thinks they never cause a foul, even some of our own guys. So, no, it is not rats off a ship on Luka Doncic. Bring that old – well, that, that, that doesn't come out right. But keep your old man body, old man game going. This might not be the YMCA, but it's fun to watch. He puts people in a blender. He puts people to school. He beats you nice and slow, like a slow jam. So, no, not, not rats off a ship on Luka Doncic's act. Uh, give us one more, Jennifer. I actually got sent from our secret source mm-hmm. about Taylor Swift's class. It is a seven week intensive course that will focus on copyright, trademark, and business affairs. Oh, boring. Actually, it's not that boring. You, you know, you learn a lot of stuff with that, but okay. Not for everyone. Copyright? You want to do a seven-week class on copyright? I've done those kind of classes before, and I really enjoyed them. What are we talking about? We do it during this show. When we get the email about copyright. Our training classes are like this. (laughs) Or as much as you jump up on YouTube and video stuff, you probably want to know as much about copyright and trademark as anybody. No, he doesn't. He just wants to do that. (laughs) apologize. You ever got to see some assist? No. Oh, man. it's not really a big deal. All I just shake just, my, I just, I, I, yeah, like uh, I've, had, off, that, that I've had that happen with parody songs before. Like shake it off. three years later, they're like, Hey, we had to take off this uh, Facebook. And I'm like, well, damage is done. I mean, it already went viral. So I don't know what to tell you. You used to do that in newsroom. You used to shoot something that you knew you couldn't, but you had to get it for the story. Yeah. And you would get cease and desist. They call you right away. And your news director would be like, what made you think you could shoot that? Because I had a deadline. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's like, fine. what are you going to do? <laughs> I'd rather have the story than nothing. So, yeah, you're good. You're good. And then they don't really care on YouTube because no. the person gets the money. Like, if they copyright flag you, they love it because that means the Taylor Swift money goes to Taylor Swift. Nobody really gets pulled for it anymore. No. they All they can do is cease and desist. They tell you cease and desist, and then if you don't, then you face legal action. But, no, like, I figure if I'm telling like, a Taylor Swift class, like, I want to learn about, you know, her albums. Anyway, there's going to be some details and minutia in there. Indeed, you know, something you want to get into. I promise you. Give us one more, JFig. Apparently, there is rumors of Sylvester Stallone ugly shaming cast members on Tulsa King. Rats off a ship. Don't believe it. Sly with (laughs) never. Rats off a ship. That means, wait, you could say, you could say anything about Sylvester Stallone. And that was, that is the response you're going to get. Don't believe it. Right, you didn't believe when he threw uh, seventeen boxes worth of steroids out the window. No, that right? I oh, okay. <laughs> I just don't care. Leave him alone. Yeah, I love Tulsa King. It's a great show. Listen. Sly is back, baby. If, uh, and, and, and listen, if you're too ugly to be on his show, get less ugly. Uh, really? You, he's, that, you know what's crazy wait, about he's that? A state? Looker. <laughs> he's a looker. He's a hey, looker. He's a looker. He's no You looking so, so good? I'm I'm not rats off a ship. I mean, I'm I am rats off a ship for this reason. You got to be careful with how to treat the people you work with. Right? That it has nothing to do about what you're saying to them, but just in general. Right? I have a problem with people that think they can do or say whatever because they hired you. That's a big problem. Right? So yeah, I have a problem with that. Uh, I mean, he's a known control freak. I mean, the guy you write you write two of those two of those big time uh, franchises in Rocky and Rambo. You know, if if Tulsa King's not going, is not up to to Sylvester Stallone's snuff. Now, especially if you're an ugly, you know, then I, I'm sorry. I, I will I stuff. will say this, um, <clears throat> Sly. You. When was the last supermodel that came out of Tulsa? <laughs> so, like, what do you do? What do you want them to look like? I thought that was the charm of the show is that they have a bunch of people who can't be in the mob. Like, they're all these 
doofuses who are right. trying to be criminals. That's exactly. the whole point. Like, I just, I don't think, I don't think it's necessary to take that route with the people you work with, right? Um, you need to have a level of respect. I don't care what the chain of command is, right? But fat shaming somebody, you can yell at somebody for not doing their job. You can yell at somebody for not being respectful. You can do a whole lot of other things. But once you get into the area of shaming somebody because of the way they look, then I kind of, I'm, uh, I would agree I, though. There's a difference between fat shaming and ugly shaming. Like if you're fat shaming, all right, we got to have a problem with it. But if you're ugly, you're ugly. Like, I don't know what to tell you. You know, you're ugly. Wow. I mean, not you. You're a very handsome person. I'm just saying like the ugly know they're ugly. That's so messed I mean, up. Okay. What do you mean? Oh, okay. Oh, oh no, 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 I got you. Okay, okay, George no, Clooney. Don't. Minus oh, one. Okay. Okay, 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 George I Clooney. I think you're coming for me. No. <laughs> okay, George Clooney. Hey, oh, you looked at the mirror, like, Lily. Like, Did it break? Come on. I mean, come on. What is, what, like. There is no reason to ugly shame, right? okay? Okay, but think about this. You're doing a Tulsa I King don't scene, care. right? All right, but think about this. If you're doing a Tulsa King scene and somebody's just, I mean, really busted, it just takes away from the scene, especially if they're just an extra. No, does it? It's Tulsa. <laughs> That's the whole beauty of it. Wait, but are you Tulsa shaming now? What's going on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am. It's just like, wait, 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 wait. If you go film. In New Orleans, you can't fat shame. Everybody's Ooh. fat. Everybody's big. It's, right. The so if you big. filming in New Orleans and you you saying somebody look like Ray Lewis, so what? They all do. Now I will say this: they're beautiful. They're just a little thick. Everyone's beautiful in their own kind of way. Okay. Oh no 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 no! I mean, <laughs> listen, J Fig. I'm oh, telling you what, there's some what? beautiful, there's some beautiful people in New Orleans from the neck up. They don't put the uglies on reality TV. No. Oh, but well, yeah. I told I told my I didn't I forgot her name. I was telling Mel. The Love is Blind girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which, which one? If you asked her, you'd be like, hey. picture with. You'd be like, hey, Ray Love Ray? is Yeah. Could you like by the way, have you seen the latest season of Love is Blind? No. Okay, I don't well, I have. Love is blind. Oh wait, are you are you, are you referring to the whole Megan Fox thing? No, I'm not. Because um, I actually no, I she really shouldn't have said she looks like Megan Fox because she doesn't. She but shouldn't she's, not, have. she's not an unattractive woman. She's but, not. But she don't look like, like Megan Fox. You can't, is, first of all, you somebody got to tell you who they think you look like. Exactly. You can't say I look like so and so. Right. Because I want to look like Denzel, but I don't. But she, if you look <laughs> at her eyes, I'm like maybe like this section right here. You can nah. see a resemblance. Hold on. Mm, you okay. Have and that, okay. When I'm meeting a girl, that's the visual I'm going to get. I'm going to squeeze into right here You're and say, tunnel in. Oh, tunnel you, know you kind of look like Holly Berry from right here. <laughs> from right here, you look like Holly Berry. Look, Miss Miss she, she is beautiful, okay? I'm not just saying. Those you three pores on you, your nose. You cannot say who you look like. I agree. I Somebody agree. else has to say that. And then that's how it normally goes, right? Honestly, her saying that defeated the whole purpose of Love is Blind. He shouldn't have given that. He shouldn't have been given that um note. Oh, how about, oh, you remember Friday? Does anybody remember Friday? Oh, she looked like Janet Jackson. <laughs> oh, where are your rats, by the way, on uh, the rumors, J-Fig? They better be not true. Oh wow! I'm rats off a ship. I'm rats off a ship. Do not, do not go ahead and ugly shame people. Okay. Dan Day, I have nothing to add to this conversation. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Take a break. Back after this.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy. Take you up until 2 here on the program. Let's get to our headlines. Brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Miami Heat, they're back on the hardwood tonight. 7.30 is your tip-off from the Kaseya Center. 6.15 preheat with Solana and Tommy Tig. They will get you ready for tonight's action. Um, let's see. I'm looking right now. Ira Winderman has tweeted out Leroy. Uh, it says, so Tyler Hero seemingly will play both ends of a back-to-back set. He is listed as available tonight versus the Mavs. Terry Rozier, questionable. Duncan Robinson Ow. is up to doubtful. And then, uh, all right. So Duncan Robinson, not ruled out, but skeptical. I mean, you know, I would say don't hold your breath on it. You know, you want him to get fully back. And he had said in, in some of those uh, quotes that he's like, you know, I, I really probably, I was doing everything I could to help the team, but you could tell he did not look himself. Right. So, he wasn't moving well either. No, no, he wasn't. So that to look forward to tonight, 7.30 again, your tip. You can hear that on 560 WQAM. Panthers, they beat the Senators 2-0. You guys can hear about it on uh, Cat Talk. Uh, Use the Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y, roll it back, top of the third hour, and hear from Paul Maurice, who uh, talked about his mouth tricking him. We, We know how much these games mean for the Heat. But as far as the Panthers, how important is it to – is it just a matter of just finishing strong or is it a matter of positioning or you – know, like that's what I'm trying to – Yeah, I mean, listen, you have a couple – We of, already know they're in. Yeah, with Ekblad and Verhage, you know, like you got some guys who, you know, are going to be big contributors. They're saving them. Um, so it's not as critical for sure. You're not fighting tooth and nail like you were at the end of last year. We call that the Kucha Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Marlins will wrap up their series with the Yankees tonight. Ryan wrap Weathers is up. on the hill. Wrap it up. When did they start? Fair enough. Uh, he takes on Marcus Stroman. 705, your first pitch from the Bronx. And the Pinks, they're in action tonight. They take on Monterey. A lot of action. 1030. A lot of action. Everybody playing except the Panthers. Yep. You could hear that tonight on AM 790 if you want to listen to the Pinks. And uh, give us the scenario one more time, Dan Day. What do we need? We need either a two nothing win. Is that you got to win by two? Is that what you basically win by two do? and you advance? And you know who you'd play? Hmm? MLS's own Columbus Crew, mm-hmm. MLS champions, Columbus Crew in the semifinals. If you oh. win by one, then that's the extra time or the penalty kicks. Does it go to like does it, when when you go to the next round? Is this what this is quarterfinals? Mm-hmm. So the semifinals have two legs also, or is it just semifinals is the semifinals? Nope. Semifinals has two legs, but the final is, for most tournaments, usually one game, like a big Super Bowl. Got it. Got it. All right. So there you go. Pink's in action tonight. I like that. Bad blood is uh, Dan Day let us know. Bad blood. Is it usually just two legs in most tournaments? Yes. Okay. Most of the time. But I think the cool thing about that is you get to play a playoff game at home. Home and away, yeah. Right. And you got to protect your home field more pitch more than anything because right. the exactly. tight could be away goals, which right. is what gets down to the frustration of the last game, right? You felt like you kind of got hosed and you give up those late goals, you know, because you'd be sitting pretty if it wasn't for these crooked officials. <laughs> I just like the fact that if it's true, which you got, you can't really believe Monterey's assistant coach. I've never seen Leonel Messi get really that animated to the point where he was lifting his hand up like he was going to punch somebody. Yeah, I would figure he's going to send that bald security guard after somebody if he was going to do that. <laughs> that guy's a dancer. That guy's oh, always a guy. Just, fall that, fall guy's guy. Always, that guy's always just standing around ready to take out hey, messy danger. Did you see the other day that teenager, that little 12, 13 year old girl ran on the field and took a selfie with Messi and security and the bodyguard had to run and take her away? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I don't understand. Like living like him is is a, another level because nobody's bothering Jimmy Butler like that down here. Yeah. I mean, by the way, it looks like the horse. We've gotten our answer, Leroy. Yes, tomorrow. It's a commercial. He teased it on a. Uh, he teased on his uh, his Instagram. All you just heard were little show pony hooves. And then I think it's a, a water commercial, whatever that water is that he uh, 
endorsements. I, I, I want the same water that horse is drinking because that horse looks that big. horse was gorgeous. Gorgeous. That horse was uh was absolutely beautiful. Stunning a horse. Yep. Um there it is. Look at that horse. By the way, brilliant marketing because no like that's definitely then put out by the people who shoot that commercial. Yeah. And like they're getting everybody talking about this because nobody else had this picture. We know this city. If somebody has a picture of something that weird, there's nine angles of it, and they're on only in well, Dade. The the best point was made that was made as to what it could be is look at the cars on both sides of the road facing Jimmy. Yep. And that is a clear indication that something it it's a close set. <laughs> right? Because you got two cars on that side. This car beneath uh is on the wrong is on one side so so it just doesn't make sense with the cars and it's an it also school. has to be somewhere by our station yeah somewhere look, in at that area. Walls. look at the yeah. walls the uh yep. fences and it's wow. an old school caddy next to a ford suv yep right mm -hmm. i'm very much uh looking forward to that uh coming out tomorrow it seems like that is uh, that was the tease date on jimmy's ig so um that was our yeah. question the other day right if it was real like, yeah when, when, when is jimmy gonna give us a heads up yep well, and, uh, there you and, have so, it. and so we did uh we'll take a quick break uh there was some a little i don't know if you guys remember a little bit of trash talk that was uh, happening at the end of last football season a retort has now come from the uh -huh. miami dolphins on it that's next
Uh, uh. Welcome back, everybody. It's Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Take you up until two here on the program. So Nevin Shapiro has now added a new video to his Instagram, <sighs> which is Let's just, go. it's just, Why a, do we care? Let's go. It's just a video of him slow walking around a pool. Is it the pool on the Miami campus? Uh, no, it looks <sighs> like he's on some kind of like high rise or something like that. You know, like he's just, he's just, you know, gallivanting. And then like, I guess he's looking at like, what a viral sensation he's become with 300 likes on his last video. Why do we care? I don't know. He's, he's, I mean, he, look, I'll give him credit for this. He's a showman, you know, he's about the theater. That's him. Uh, theater. Looking. He's literally sitting down on a chair. Yeah. But he's looking at all of the people talking about him, which I would assume is just us. I don't know who else is, you know, us and some, but like, then they go into a slow zoom and he's, he lets you know, all eyes on all me. Eyes. It's like the new Tupac. Yeah, well, no, he has two hawks all eyes on me in the, in the background of this. I'm oh, just not okay. playing it, but it has more of an effect when you hear it with the with the music. I think I'm interested. You're interested. He's been you've been sold. <laughs> what the, is Seven's next step? It's the cell of the Tupac, and he is so anti Tupac and out of shape, out of prison, old Ponzi scheme guy. That yeah, he didn't even go to the rough prison. No, uh, he went to white collar prison. Yeah. Man, what could it be up to, though? He's up to something. NIL means Nevin image and likeness. That's what it means. That's what he's that's what the, that, that's what the uh, the big tease was his last time out. So I don't know if you guys missed it. This was uh, this was him earlier. This was his first video that was uh, a little bit more to it, where it had like a montage and he lets everybody know you want me. Come get me. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I do, but uh, we'll find out risk prisoners being released from jail. One of them is a familiar name to University of Miami sports fan, the Hurricanes booster, Nevin Shapiro. You may be thinking, I remember that name. He was the former Miami booster and Ponzi scheme organizer, and the story reads like a movie script. So the NIL situation has become the biggest thing in college sports. Kids getting paid crazy money, pay for play. I guess people forgot where this really originated from. NIL, that's Nevin Image and Likeness. That's where that started. Anything else is a joke. That's how it went down. I'm looking for all the smoke. You want me? Come see me. He should have kept the original music. It was yeah. a bad edit there at the end. You know, yeah. like he had the. Hey. He had us going there for a sec. Hey, you, you ready for my picks? Yeah, let's get them, dude. What do we got? All right. So. <clears throat> The way I do my picks is you have tiered, um, like you can take one from the top five and two from the top ten. So I don't know where these rankings are, especially with the, You're the about world rankings. rankings. Is that what yeah. it's got to go with? World rankings, and I don't know where the live the live guys fit in. So I'm gonna give you my five guys that I would pick to have a legitimate chance to win, and then I have a long shot in there, and then I'm gonna pick my next five. Right, so I'm gonna go Scotty Scheffler, Wyndham okay. Clark, Brian Harmon, uh, Brooks Kepka, and John Rom. Right, right? So Brooks Kepka plus 1600 I'm, on hard. Rock. I don't care what the hell Brooks is doing when a major comes in, he's gonna be in my top five. All right, so you got Brooks Kepka, Scotty Scheffler. Yep, what were the other ones? Uh, Wyndham Clark. Wyndham, Wyndham Clark's plus three thousand on Hard Rock, uh, and uh, um, Brian Harmon. Brian Harmon, Harmon is, about is plus five, five thousand. Five foot three, but he's a dog. So now my next five are guys that I'm I'm reaching on, right? Uh, Things have to break right for them, or you actually think they got a chance? Just, they're good enough to win. But they're either first timers or haven't really gotten it all together, right? Uh, Ludwig Aberg, I've told oh, you, I'm, I'm a that guy's awesome. I like he's Ludwig. young. He's young though. Uh, Akshay Batia, Akshay, Ludwig, by the way, plus twenty five hundred. 
Akshay Bhatia, he's going to be plus 5,000. He just won um, this past week. Um, yeah, he's plus 7,500. Yeah, but but he's a good player, and I just think that uh, mentally he may struggle, but physically and, and how he plays the game, he might just get out there and, and, and just – be you know like i ain't afraid of nothing isn't this amazing tiger woods who uh yes i think we said was one million to one he was plus fifteen thousand yesterday but everybody just hearing him say if things break right he's now down to plus ten thousand oh my god all right cameron young who's like he hasn't won yet but he's always there right he's a dangerous loomer dangerous loomer say he the gala Good player. Uh, you know, again, these are guys that, you know, you might see on the leaderboard early and mentally or because of the 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 moment, they might fade at the end. But you're going to see them somewhere on the leaderboard. And Rory McIlroy is going to end up in the top five or top ten. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. He is. I can't. I can't. Mm-hmm. Listen, he's look, he's one of the best players in the world. I am. Yeah, but like he's he's peaked. He hasn't peaked. He's peaked. He hasn't peaked. All golfers have ebbs and flows. They go up and down. They like, I mean, look at somebody like Justin Thomas. They thought he was going to win 20 majors and he fell off the face of the earth. And now he's working his back. Jordan Spieth, same thing. Right. They were like, oh, Spieth's going to win all. He's next Tiger. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Like, Tiger is the anomaly in all of this that he had a stretch from the second he picked, he turned pro. To one of his last days playing, he was winning golf tournaments. That doesn't happen. Usually the tour is you you, you have two great years, and then it kind of fades away. Um, Scotty Scheffler, he's been on a bit of a heater, right? Like anytime he's on the golf course, you got to pick him. So, yeah. But that's How many majors does he have? Scotty Scheffler, he won, he won, um, he won the, the, the Masters. I think he has two. No, nah, just the Masters. Just the Masters. Okay. He has two runner. He has runner ups in PGA and U.S. Open. Right, and guess who won the PGA that he was runner up in? Brooks Kepka. Uh, Brooks Kepka. Yeah. So. Black blood. Yes. That guy. That guy got stones. Where's He's Mr. Just, Vape? Huh? Where's Mr. Vape? Is he playing in this one? Who? Dustin Johnson. Yeah, he is. He is. But but I like. I'm going to say something. Y'all don't realize this. We saw big ass Dustin Johnson. Big dude. Thin as a rail. He's like, he was a tall, slender guy. He got some meat behind him now. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, fat cat syndrome. What's like, why is John Rahm acting so weird? Everybody keeps talking like he's acting weird about all this live stuff. Like, does he have remorse over it? No, here's the deal. He, He, here's what he wanted. He wanted to go take all that money and then still leave the door open to come back to the PGA Tour. The damage is and done. So that's how he's talking. Like, I think a lot of guys are, are, are feeling that way, right? That hopefully something gets done before his contract is up and then he'll be able to come back no harm, no foul. He just got rich, right? But the thing about it is there's been so many guys that attacked the PGA Tour, that's why you notice the quiet guys are the guys that are welcome back. Like, what are they going to say to Brooks Kepka? He won a major last year. He was on live. Now, here's the other thing. When you watch the Masters, most of the live guys live, live. are going to be wearing live clothes, except for guys like Brooks Kepka, Right? Brooks Kepka doesn't wear Liv stuff on the Liv tour. He still wears his Nike stuff. He still wears um, his, uh, what is it? He should because his his stupid uh, merch that he sells for his team sucks. But that's why. Because the the, the captain is not, he doesn't wear it. So, yeah, I wanted, that's that's the team I wanted to back. I know, ridiculous. Right, so so range that, goats though. Oh, range that was goats. A cool logo. Yeah, they got a cool look like a little pink goat, but they 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 got too many colors. Their colors were clashing too much. I couldn't figure out how I was gonna wear it with my hat or whatever. 
yeah. I wanted the Iron Heads to have better merch. Yeah, the Iron Heads. They failed me. Team. They failed. The merch, dude. There's a ton. Let me tell you that that merchandise shop. Yeah, they got some stuff in there. All right, if you guys missed it, Amy Audubon joined us earlier in the show. She broke down all things heat. We got the big time back to back tonight against the Dallas Mavericks. She joins us next.
night. They win last overtime. Hawks, and they're back at it tonight. Yep, against the Dallas Mavericks. You guys, of course, can hear that right here. Five sixty WQAM six fifteen preheat with Solana. And Tommy Tag, and then Jason Jackson, and our next guest, Amy Audibert, will have the call for you from the Caseya Center. You can also see her fantastic coverage on Bally Sports Sun. Amy joins us on the Toyota of Hollywood guest line shop. Hundreds of Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. Amy, how are you? I'm great, guys. I always say I I don't know how players play back to backs and coaches because like <laughs> it's tough. Like even for us, try to get our prep done and work done. And I didn't even travel, so I'm great. It's a game day. I love game days, but they are tight. <laughs> back to back has to be the toughest thing in that, especially road to yeah. home or home to road. Yeah. Like the travel. Like I don't. I can't even imagine what. The, Football panics when you go Sunday to Thursday, <laughs> yeah. right? So I can't imagine going back to back. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. I, I know that like people get frustrated sometimes. With, oh, hi, how come so-and-so doesn't look sharp? Well, because <laughs> at the end of the day, I know they're definitely gifted, <laughs> but they're still human beings. <laughs> right. So it's every back to back to me is just that reminder, you know, like. Not to you, mention double overtime. Weird today. Oh, overtime. oh my gosh. <laughs> We're watching it, and it's the best part is Will and I, we, we always open close games with, like, kind of the finish package. And we start our fin finish package, like, start editing it at the 445 mark in an, in regulation. You know, Jimmy had that and one, and you're like, good, let's go, let's cook, let's get on that plane and go. And then, like, by the second overtime, you're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you got to play tomorrow. But it, it, that's that's what it is. So here we go. So yesterday, uh, my favorite part of the game was bar none, Nikola Jovic. I've been so pleased watching him. Uh, for our audience uh, who uh, did not hear Jimmy Butler's reaction to him last night, Dan, if you could have this just uh, as Jimmy, very proud of Nikola Jovic, a man whose picture is in his locker and uh, and seeing the kind of growth that he's had. But here was Jimmy after the game. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I mean, that good dude's been doing that for a long time. I, I've seen it. You know, I've seen the work that he puts in. I see the film that he watches. I understand how much that he cares about the game and how much he cares about winning. So, I mean, I, I know who he is. I know the type of player he is. And I know, honestly, how much money he's going to make in his league. What were your impressions of, of how Jovic has been playing, Amy, not just last night, but just in general? He's, he feels like he's he's rounded into something here. Yeah, I think, first of all, on the personal side, anyone who knows Nico is just happy for him because he's just a super awesome person too. But if you take that out of it, uh, I'm – it's it's awesome because he's been patient in terms of just like, you know, Nico will go from starting to not playing at all, you know, and, and then like just kind of having his spurts. And then last year really having to work behind the scenes. So I love the fit in the starting lineup. I think he understands that he might not shoot the ball 20 times, especially when he's out there with Tyler, Jimmy and Bam, he probably shouldn't, but he's a great catch and shoot three point shooter at, at 610. He's getting it over top of a lot of closeouts. Uh, but then he's at his best, I think, when he's actually in the open court with the ball in his hands and whether it's his finesse finishes or facilitating. And he's getting to do a lot of that. But for me, I would say Tobin is just like the confidence. Like you're starting to see the automatic happen and you don't get that without reps. So this is like all part of the process. Um, it's come together really nice for him. But it also helps when we've seen Jimmy and Nico a little bit of their relationship because it's on Instagram. When you When you feel like you've got guys like that in your corner of course you're more empowered to go out there and when by the way he played a career high 39 minutes in a double overtime game last night that's your confidence right there like right. double overtime and coaches got me out there so i'm really excited for him not just for this remainder of whatever happens here but for the future um something like this can be the foundation of a young player amy i wanted to ask you this because i've always this is always because i've been begging for him to play last year because my whole thing was He's been a pro since he was 15 or 16 years old playing against grown men. That situation versus playing college basketball for four years. How is, you know, Nico coming over at 1920? Uh, is he farther along than, say, uh, Jaime Jaquez, who only played against college kids who are not going to be playing at this level? That's a tough one because Jaime is one of the more mature right. rookies that you'll see out there. So, but I would say to to that point, Nico's mature a little bit 
beyond his years because the one thing about college basketball is they tell you where to be, what time to be there. Like, you know, everything's kind of giving, you got to show up and work, but uh, for Nico to kind of have that professional setting, sure, maybe that made it a little bit more of a uh, transition smoother for him, but I would say he, he had to put a lot of muscle on, right? Like, yeah, yes, yeah. he's playing grown man. He still had to put a lot of muscle on. He still put a lot of work in behind the scenes. Yeah. And then don't forget last year, he's 19. He still is not legally old enough to buy a drink in the United States of America. <laughs> Yet here he is starting in the, in playing minutes and, you know, maybe not having family here all the time and all that. So uh, it just, it speaks to uh, again, his just emotional maturity to be able to come out here and and continue and, and then stay locked in. I know that a lot of people wanted him to play a lot more last year, but I think that he did have to work do a lot of, to his body, right? To kind of just sustain. Listen, when he's driving there, you get hit. I think I do believe NBA hits in the paint are a little bit different than NBA hits in college. Right. So you have to be able to sustain that. So and defensively, I think he's also making some strides, right? He's coming more confident on the defensive end and with his length, you know, you're learning how to utilize that on the perimeter is going to be so big for him, but you can really already see him getting there in small steps. So again, just super bright future for Nico. How have you uh, liked Tyler Hero's return so far? Oh, this is not by accident today. <laughs> I'm actually kind of channeling, uh, hopefully he's out there tonight. Oh, who hasn't loved Tyler Hero's return so far? Um, if anyone's watched any of the coverage that I've been involved in, the offensive woes have been what they have been for Miami. I think it's not a coincidence that Tyler has not been available in a lot of those games just because of his ability to self-create and create for others because of that. You know, we know Tyler is so great in the mid-range, coming off the screens, long range. I know Spell Watts talked about getting him into the paint. He talked about rim finishes a bit more, which he can get to as well. But then there's the intangibles, not in the big moments, yet another guy now. So Terry's established himself as a clutch player before he got here, but now when he's here, he's had some big moments. I don't think Jimmy Butler's ever not going to to be a threat as a clutch player because of what he's done and who he is and everybody around the league knows it. Now you're adding another guy on there. Like you better not leave. You're going to, okay. You're going to double off on Tyler. All right. You know what I mean? So I think it's, that's like also an exciting part is he's one of the most confident guys and you earn your confidence from getting in the gym and Tyler is never shy about, you know, I think he's proud of his work and he should be. And that's why in those moments he's so calm. And even that floater he hit uh, late game yesterday, yeah. right? Like just so yeah. like huge moment. And it's like his body language is the same at the beginning of the game as it is taking a shot in double overtime to, you know, extend or win or whatever it is. And that speaks to his work. We call that the flamingo. <laughs> yeah, I just like it. What are you thinking? Like, if you if you imagine a flamingo playing basketball, oh my God. one leg, why that would be its perfect shot. So I figure, wow, it, goes, it used. I know you see, call it the baby float, but he's growing up, so he needs a, a more mature name for the shot now. So we're we're, we're wavering between yeah. flamingo goat or float mingo. I like float mingo. Don't do it, like, Amy. You know, don't don't. You know, do it. Feel free to use it on the broadcast. I will. I, I see it though. Like I see the. I see what you're talking about. So that's. that's awesome. You can imagine it, right? If we were to if we were to animate a a, a flamingo play, that would be its money shot. The balance on the one leg. I'm always very impressed by that with Tyler. Yeah, yeah Amy. I like that. You think that you know? Because I always wonder because Terry and and Tyler are very similar. Um. How does that work together? Well, I think that's one of the more unfortunate parts of when Tyler kind of got injured again, was they were just starting to kind of try yeah. to figure that out, right? Yeah. Similar in that they can both get their shots off and create, but I mean, when I you watch them play, I don't think they're very similar at all. I think Tyler yeah. has so much more length. I think Terry's got a lot more speed. So I think with guys like that, you have to continue to build reps. And for Tyler, there's that learning curve. And he talked about it when Terry got here of knowing when to cut and when to kind of just be more of a floor spacer and a knockdown right. three point shooter. And that's going to have to go vice versa for Terry, right? There's going to be some times when you got to give Tyler the ball and let him cook. And right. I think at the end of the day, and I know that some people were saying, Oh, this doesn't work. I don't like it. You got to give it some time because I will always say this about the team that I've been in my second season with the heat, the common goal if that's if that's the same across the board, then you're going to be okay. And I really do believe genuinely that these guys all like want to win. You don't hear a lot of like the ego stuff, me, me, me. Like these guys want to win at the end of the day. Now they may feel that they can help 
this team win more if they had the ball in their hands more, but they want to win. Mm -hmm. And if that's the foundation, if that's what's driving everybody in a locker room, then you can always kind of work with that. And I do believe that, and especially like the leaders in this, in this locker room is that it is, they want to win games and it starts with Spo too. So um, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting them both out there because it's just more options. Uh, how concerned are you with Duncan Robinson's injury? Cause that he didn't look right coming back. I didn't like reading the quotes that I read from him. And I mean, Amy, like there was an argument. This guy was the third best player for the team this year. He was just like, he he's, he was so important to whenever they had success. So a Duncan Robinson murky future, that's a big blow for for a playoff run. Yeah. I mean, I, first of all, I would say like, I just hope that he, it's more of that. He just needs to continue to rest and rehab backs her. Everyone's had back injuries and I certainly have. It's not, you know, it's your arms, it's your legs, it's like your core. Everything you do kind of stems from your core and your back. So that's a tough spot that if you're not feeling well to compensate for, you know, you could have a sore elbow and still run really fast and try to kind of, you know, there's certain certain things you can do with the back. It's tough. So it's concerning because to your point, I think when Duncan's on fire and he's out there, but it's not just the shooting. I mean, we talk about he's an automatic floor spacer and that I don't think that's ever going to change. He's established himself as one of the best shooters in the league. So Duncan go stand in the corner and like you're stretching defense, but it's the fact that I think what took him up a level this year was his attack mode, was his confidence getting to the cup and doing all those fun um, passes or like hesitation past Wemby. Those moments were to me the best moments, but then also I thought, at, especially at the beginning of the season um, when Tyler went out and he had to kind of really step into that role defensively, I thought he really, that's something that you really worked on in the off season. And you could see because at the beginning of the year, people were like attacking him and trying to attack him. And he had a couple like, good gate warrior like he was standing up for himself and he was getting right. stops and mm -hmm. it's tough to do either of those it's tough to play on either side of the ball if you're sore or you're stiff or you're not right so it's certainly concerning but at the same time i know what you guys know right like i mean you hope that it's just an issue if he needs more time or more treatment or more stabilizing type stuff but i just it's unfortunate this is the game and when you look around the league no one's feeling bad for anyone who has an injury because there's some other injuries around the league that are concerning. Amy, you know, the biggest issue with, with all of this is, is that the only thing that heals it is time and you don't have any. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Oh, man. Right. 79 tonight. Right. 79? Right. So, so <laughs> that's, that's the issue. He's like, Hey, what will help Duncan Robinson about two months of rest? Well, you don't yeah. have two months. I know what would be really nice is not have to, play in next week and have that yeah. <laughs> time, you know, yeah. but we'll see what happens. Now you're, you're hoping Orlando drops, you're hoping Cleveland drops. So, uh, but you could still win out and then destiny's in your hands kind of thing. So we'll see. You guys can watch Amy uh, on Bally sports sun. You can listen to her of course, right here on the Miami heat audio experience, your flagship my 560 WQAM with the great Jason Jackson. We have coverage starting tonight at 6.15. Amy, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks guys. Yeah, we'll see you soon, Tobin.